Danvers uh, Conservation Commission meeting for December the 12th, 2019. Uh, we operate under the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Chapter 26 of the Town of Danvers General Bylaw, the Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Uh, we will call, we'll go through the agenda, and we'll call each applicant or the representative up to present their their request, and the board has had time, after the board has had time to ask questions and discuss the project, we will accept questions from the audience. Because this is a public meeting, it is required by law that you give your name and address before you speak. Although we may disagree on the issues raised, all persons present during this meeting are expected to be civil to all other meeting attendees. This includes the members of the commission, staff, abutters, concerned citizens, and property owners and project applicants. That being said, uh, the first thing, order of business, will be a roll call. So I'll start to my left. Vanessa Karn. Michael Splain, present. Peter Wilson. Chelsea King. And our staff. Oh, Georgia Pentagast. Mm -hmm. Okay, our first item on our agenda <laughs> is a request for a certificate of compliance for 24 Robin Hill Road, DEP file number 14-13-13. Uh, who's here to represent the applicant? I am, uh, good evening, Greg Hoffman from Williams and Garages. We are presenting the Rosani Security Compliance Request for 24 Rockwell Road. Uh, last October, we were before the Commission with notice of intent filing to construct a retaining wall in the rear of the yard to bring up a great, great, great more of a level area for the children to play. We received an order of conditions shortly thereafter. Uh, the wall was constructed, we did an as-built, everything was built where it was supposed to be built. Uh, part of the permit requires some plantings to be installed. Those were done last fall, they're still doing well. Um, the property owners went with the, um, they seeded the base of the wall in all the altered areas, and they got grass to start growing. Then they put down sod on the upper portion for a piece of stabilization. So we issued a letter, we went through the order and certified that everything was in compliance with your conditions. And as required, we went through every condition and addressed each one. How high is that wall? Um, it's probably as high as eight feet. Eight feet? Yeah. That's why you need the fence, huh? Yeah, there's a fence and they had to use geo-free fabric to hold it in place. It's an engineer wall, so require building permit, which they received. And Georgia, you visited the site? Yep. Yeah, Greg and I went out there two weeks ago, um, and everything looked good, including the trees you mentioned. I saw no issues. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Vanessa? Um, no, I don't think I have anything. Right? No. Chelsea. No. I would like to comment. Thank you for having your work complete within the time frame and getting your certificate of compliance as required in the timeline. That's something. Also, I like the way you identified all the conditions and responded. Mm -hmm. Easy to follow. Thank you. Yeah. And when was this condition, order of conditions issued? 2018? 2018. Yeah. Good. The, it is good that you yeah. came back yeah. in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, if anyone has no other questions or any issues, uh, I'd make a, entertain a motion to, uh, to accept, to issue a certificate of compliance. I'll, I'll make a motion. Uh, we issue a certificate of compliance for 24 Robin Hill Road, DEP file number 14-1313. Second. Motion made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Good luck. Thank See you. Now. Thank you. That's a nice straightforward. Uh, next up, yeah, uh, request for a determination of applicability for seven, 7 Hutton Street, uh, number 2019-05. Uh, who's here to represent the applicant? My name is Khaled. I work for Green Team Constructing, the general contracting company, 1094 Pleasant Street, still in Massachusetts. First of all, accept my apology. It's the first time I stand before commission this way, so I don't have a presentation board. 
Uh, so we all got the plan in front of us. Thank so. you. So we didn't start yet. We just started the permit cutting process. And from my what I understood that we need to go through the process to... Uh, right. I'll share this with you. It's, it's, it's a 90 years old owner who's planning to move back his kids to the house um, for family reasons. They need extra space and that's required to make addition to the kitchen and the bathroom. And it's gonna be in the back of the house. And as you see in the plans, the addition is contained with the part of the point of the current existing house to the wetland. So, and as I explained in the letter, we're going to be very careful taking all the recommendations from your side to do this job in a way that we're not affecting or making any impact on the environment in that location. Yeah. The, um, the deck, well, is the deck a poor yeah, deck? Is it concrete? Yeah, it, it has concrete footing. But we're going to be taking out the deck and extend the kitchen in the exact size where the deck is. Now. Are you going to pour foundation? Use the same so footing. You're going to pour. Now we have to pour uh, eight-inch foundation wall between the footings to be able to hold the, the, the addition. One level. Sorry. One level. Yes. It's just going to be a slab. It's not going to be. Uh, no, no, no basement, no crawling space. Mm. It's going to be slab on the floor. Is the existing the house just on a slab? No, it has a full foundation. The existing house, full basement. Has a basement. But we're not going through a, a full basement. We're mm -hmm. just going to put the foundation wall as a U-shape connected to the existing foundation, keep the fill-up nature, mm -hmm. compress it mm -hmm. as cold, mm -hmm. and put the slabs, no crawl, no, no basement underneath. Okay, and there's... For both the bathroom and the kitchen. And the, the excavation materials, what are your plans for those? Sorry? Uh, the material that you excavate? We're going to just be using simple machines, nothing bigger than a bobcat or maybe by hand even if it's required. Because okay. it's a small manageable small project. area that we don't need heavy machines to access the location. But you do have to go down four feet, so there's a... Yeah, four feet for the mm -hmm. first lap. And where will you store the uh, material that you, you dig up? The, the machine or the material? No, where will you store the... The, dirt, are you gonna the machines, they will, we will take them out every time we finish because we know it's a critical location. We do not want to gamble with any chances. So the big machines, they're going out, storing the, the material. On the other side of the house, if you see, there is a, a, a big space on the other side. The right side, if you're facing the house from the street. Can you show us on his side? Yes. Okay, here's... Gonna yeah, be, yeah. We're going to be putting some materials on this side yeah. of the building, far away street. from everything here. No, sorry. So we're yeah. We would want it away yes, from we're here. Gonna be storing here. Yeah. So it's going to be okay. far away from everything. We're going to be limiting. We're going to try to bring the materials we need for everyday job or every couple of days. We're not going to be leaving any materials not needed for now. Everything will be limited for the short-term days we're working. All the trash deliveries will be pulled away rapidly. We're not going to be storing anything for more than a couple of days. And then you remove it off-site? Everything will go out in dumpsters. Nothing will stay there. And even we're going to always try to get smaller dumpsters to fill them fast and take them faster. We're not going to be saving anything for living the land like When will you be starting the project? Whenever you let me do it. Yeah, you can. Where <laughs> is it on this map here? Is it this? Yes. So you're putting the addition over the deck. Is there a plan to put on a deck no. beyond that? No, we're not okay. exceeding the line. The green lines are my maximum. Okay. That's okay. my so the buffer. He's outside the buffer. Right? Right? That's the 100. 100. And then yeah. this is the 25. I don't see the 35 on here, though. Is there a 35 not, um, foot on here? It's got to be. So that's 25. So it's got to be. I, I didn't see the 35 either. Mm. What am I seeing here? That's some easement. 35. See, that says the red is easement area. Yeah, yeah 50. Anyway. Oh, 50 yeah, by 35, yeah. Still um, outside the 35. I think that even with the 35 not that. shown, it looks like the work is probably out of that area. Yeah. Um, I guess I have a comment on 
So this silt sock, is this your proposal where you're going to put the erosion controls? That's the, the simple proposal. Now, yeah. if you have any extra requirements, I would be happy to, to, to obey them. Well, I see it's crossing over the 25 yes. over that, here, yes. so I probably want to pull it okay. at least around there, if not even further in. I don't okay. know. How does everybody else feel about that? No, I agree. Yeah, it should follow the uh, buffer line. Okay. Yeah. So how is that, the silt sock? Can it be on the line? I mean, well, it should be inside in, of it. Right? Should yeah. be inside, even if it's a foot inside. Well, here uh, in this instance, this 25 buffer line is in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and where you're proposing the material storage, there is kind of a grade. So you're at 23, one here, and then you're at 18 going yes. down. Oh, the, okay. the grade, the grade is correct there, but from using it for a lot of time, kind of the, the, the vehicles created kind of more flat surface. Plus, I, as I mentioned before, I'm not storing any materials mm. that I'm gonna be used for more than three, four days in advance, my max. So if I'm, I'm starting on Monday, I'm expecting all my materials would be gone by Thursday, Friday, I'm not staying for the weekend. Okay. The location, it's going to be all it's clean, under control, and the trash will yeah, be always hold away. Yeah. Like on yeah. both sides. So one of the buffers, inside one of the buffers. Yeah. 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 And then there's the 25 here. So, George, I just want, so you made that comment about the 25 foot being into the street. Mm -hmm. So, what, the, so what is, what is your suggestion? A in terms it's a different 25. Right? What do you mean? There's a, there's like, there's another 25, 25. here. That's, where does that go? Through, I mean, if you wanted, I would, you could put it on that line. I was, yeah. I was kind of referring to that's the one that's on the lot, yeah. like near yeah. the driveway, like pulling it inside the 25 there. I didn't, I wasn't paying so attention to the one that's going um, down the middle of the street. Yeah, no, that one, if you wanted to put the silt sock along that line. Yeah. Yeah. Same as grenade. You see the 25 foot yes. buffer? You stay inside that. I will. So instead yeah. of coming straight yeah. over, kind yeah. of, even that's if. That's only proposed by the engineer. I, I okay. didn't really put it here, but okay. no. I can just. And you should add the 35, shouldn't we? I mean, just show it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. According to your narrative here, George, you're saying you're proposing two additions? Yeah, so the kitchen addition over the existing deck, and then this bathroom addition, this six by eight. Very small. Oh, okay. All right. I was I misunderstood by that. So it's just the stuff that's so do you and still just the two little greens. Yeah, just yeah. The green line. Okay. Yeah. Do you okay. still agree that there's no work in the twenty five or the thirty five? Yeah. Right, he's almost he's all the work is barely at the yeah. hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I would say no. No. Okay. And, and, and how how, how old did you say the owner was? He's over 90. Yeah, and, and his family's moving in. Yeah, and yeah. to be honest, uh, I know it's emotional season now, yeah. the, but it, it is what he literally said, I don't want someone find me dead after three days. No. Oh, jeez. So he's no, getting I, his son back from Florida. I know, but yeah. I'm just... And they're making a little there. bathroom right. for him on that level, yeah? Yeah, they, they just need a more space. It's... it's they're like a packed house with the son and the wife and the yeah, kids and the dog. Yeah. Um, so they need it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a recreational or luxury. Um, it's a needed addition for their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, what's uh, just kind of poll the members of the board? Do we Are we okay issuing a negative uh, determination or do we want to ask them to uh, submit a no way. If we do an NDA, we can still give them some, like, you know, keep the silt sock yeah. there for the... Okay. Right. Without doing a full-on... Uh, Notice of intent. Yeah. yeah. You can put a couple conditions on the negative determination if that's okay. what the board decides. Because that's all I'd really be concerned about is keeping the erosion control in place. What is the, the, you know, just a, for an open discussion, when deciding between an, uh, an, a notice of intent or a request for determination of applicability, What's the most important thing to look at? The effect on the... The impact to the resources. Impact, and I don't see the, the, a lot so of Cal impact So Cal did come yet. to the office so, and spoke yeah. with David and I, and we had recommended an RDA yeah. based on the impact yeah. in the Yeah, that's stats. how I see it. 
Yeah. All right, yeah. Vanessa, you on you board with that? In? Um, I feel like it's pretty minimal. Um, so I think, you know, provided that, um, you know, the materials are kept on the side of the house and the silt sock is moved, I don't really see too many issues with doing a negative determination. Yeah. Okay, so they'll right. come back with that. Okay, so they, they have to yeah. come back. Um, uh, we, we can't rule on that today, can we? Uh, no, you can approve it with the condition that uh, the silt sock on the north side of the project is moved to the 25 line. Okay. I mean, and then before he starts, I will, I'll have to inspect, inspect the erosion control anyway, so I'll confirm that it is all on right. the 25. All right. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think we're all on the same page, so I to make a motion that we had issue a negative determination of applicability. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, issue a negative determination of applicability for 7 Hutton Street, uh, number 2019-05. With the, with with the, the yes. conditions? Conditions to move the silt sock at least at the 25 foot buffer or closer and then keep all the materials to, I suppose this is the southern side of the house. Yes. Okay. And probably outside of the 100 foot uh, jurisdictional line whenever possible. Right. Okay, we'll you see that. To the back, so past the 100 foot. Yep, okay. this back okay. corner. Okay. I can even like suggest that this makes things easier. I can put pallets and raise it over the ground and level it if you want. The way I'm going to be storing. So create a level shelf to cancel any slope factor from this equation. Would that have any effect? How does that? How big are the, will the piles be, you think? Not that big. It's, it's, it's literally like if, again, from Monday to Thursday, I cannot store that much because I cannot perform. Plus, it's winter. Could you put a tarp um, over it at night? Yes. So and maybe some sandbags? Yes. I think that, that's right. a good Yeah, because yeah. of the weather issues. Okay. Yeah. It will freeze up. Which yeah. Is. Yeah. All right, motion's been made. I'll second the motion. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's two down. Okay, uh, number letter C, notice of intent for 11 Tibbetts Avenue, DEP file number 14-1335. Who's here for the applicant? Bob Griffin on behalf of Karen Hubbard. You may recall we discussed this at last month's meeting. Uh, didn't ask us to make any plan changes, but we asked you to keep the item open because we were going to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to have essentially a different plan approved by them than one approved by you. So happy to report that the Zoning Board of Appeals has approved our application. There's no plan modification, so we're uh, good to go. I'm not to any questions. I think we did request um, some modifications to the plan that you eliminate the, uh, the work on the retaining wall? The pavers? Eliminate the what? The, the paver work? work. The, the pavers in, in the front? Oh. Uh, on the water we did, front? We did say that we were going to um, come back with a retaining wall plan at some point, and we will do that. But I, I in the not, future, uh, not as part of this. Frank, I, I didn't talk to you about the other thing. We have to remove that. But, uh, if you just want to eliminate that from your deliberations. Or okay. Well, it said the notes say the commission discussed having the applicant remove the paver work from the project and include it in a future NOI. Right, to make that basically a whole other. When project. the applicant yeah. files to repair their bulkhead seawall, when are you doing that? So it'll probably come in the next month or so with yeah. the application for the seawall work. <clears throat> okay, and you. The ZBA has given you approval on that. Yeah, on that yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't at the last meeting, but I watched the um, the recording. Um, so these pavers were they're not in they're impervious pavers, right? You're not looking for any sort of porous paver to be used. Okay. Yeah. I don't really love the four foot wide walk right at the edge. Um, I feel like 
with it being adjacent to the resource area, um, I'm not really loving the. That well, that's coming off, right? Right. Yeah, we're, we're happy to take it off. Take it yeah. off. They were there because uh, sometimes we get some splash over and the salt water yeah. the grass. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's not that important for us. No. Right, your first step is you want to get the structure built. And aside from that, you guys were all otherwise mm -hmm. fairly right. satisfied just, from yeah, last evening. We had questions about the, the, the wall or the bulkhead, what you want to call it, mm -hmm. and the pavers. But I think everyone's agreed that that's not part mm -hmm. of the scope of the project right now. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to wait until the ZBA uh, gave them approval. Yeah, on this nothing they did impacts us. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing the ZBA did. And it's going to be lives. built above the, whatever the flood. Maximum, uh, right. right. One elevation here is elevation 10. The finished floor, I think, is around 11 and a half. So we're, we're above that. For now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so say that again. It's going to be built. So the flood elevation, the 100 year flood elevation is elevation I'm not finding this, this one. The finished floor is high because I remember this one. So how, how high do you have to build up to, to get to that? Is it a higher, uh, the, founda the basement, the foundation? How do you do that? So there'll be a crawl space, and um, we can talk about the flood opening to allow water to They'll let the water pass through. That's correct. Yeah. And the floor framing will be above that. So the floor framing itself will be above the 100 foot foot elevation. And the crawl space is untouched, then what? Well, it'll have a concrete floor. It'll we'll have a floor. A, a, and things out from nesting areas like that. Yeah. And what is your plan for the, the soil that's excavated? Any excess soil will be removed from the site. It's a very small property, as you know, it's 5,500 square feet roughly. Mm -hmm. There's not much room to store anything. And do we need any erosion control around the perimeter? Uh, we, I think we do call for erosion controls. Uh, around three sides of the property, not on the fifth and half sides, but that's where we'll be accessing it for construction. How was that shown? Um, um, there's, a, there's a line in the uh, center. You see the words erosion control. Oh, I see it. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. what will that consist of? Um, we've got a, a mulch built uh, geotextile sock. The sock. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah. And you stake it. Right. Hmm. When do you plan to uh, start construction? Uh, the offers are anxious to start with demolition, and uh, depending on the weather, we may hold off uh, you know, pouring concrete and building new houses for March. But uh, as I said, they'd like, they'd like to get the process going. So, what would you do between now and March? Demolition of the building. Yeah. Huh. And again, it depends on the weather. If we get a nice warm winter, then we might just keep working. Hmm. I'm hoping for a snowy winter. <laughs> Starting off that way. Well, you know, are you going to ski on those knees? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, any uh, other questions? Um, I just want to clarify the, the, um, where I think it says Batumas Concrete Driveway. It's just a little cluttered in that area on the plan, so I just want to be sure I'm clear on like what's what's existing and what's proposed. Yeah, so that little uh, thin rectangle underneath the Petunias Concrete Driveway is actually a strip of grass that's there today. Okay. So we're going to place a, you know, about a, looks like a 10 or 12 foot wide driveway there so that they can park the car next to the side of the house. Okay. And is that going to accommodate two cars there? Um, yeah, it looks like it's long enough to put two cars. Well, one behind the other? Yeah, got lane style. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it's just a little, the plan's a little cluttery in that area. So yeah. <laughs> what, it's, it's grass now, the little rectangular strip? Yeah. What's on either side of it? Um, I think it was like concrete. Like for the car wheels to go on or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like that, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? I do just have a comment. I know. That's right. The pavers that will be removed along the wall, I think it would be good 
now for the commission to know it exact. So when the walkway meets the pavers at the end, do you want those kept or? I think we just need to clarify what's going to happen with the walkway. So when he does we want the pavers, plan, you know, then take them out. But the, the, just take do away but no, the with paver them. walkway will just. Do you want the paver walkway up to the wall? Does that? Yeah, there's this walk. This oh, connecting. that walkway. Yeah. Just so you know what, what you to have, show. What would the, be the point of it if you're taking plan. it out? Yeah, I mean, the, it'd be nice to have this little paver terrace here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, put a chair there. And just have it stop right there. So we can have Ron from here back. Yeah. 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 Okay. And when do you anticipate coming point. back for the wall? For the wall, and can you thinking about a pier as well? Uh, yeah. So yeah. in the river, of course. Have <laughs> <laughs> <Dad> another. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, anything else, Mike? Melissa? No. 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 Chelsea, you ready? Georgia. Okay. Okay. Um, Someone would like to make a motion that we uh, issue an order of conditions for? Yeah, I'll move that we issue an order of conditions for 11 Tibbetts Avenue, DEP file number 14-1335 uh, with the added condition that the paver walkway shown on the westerly side of the property abutting the river be removed and that the paver walk uh, leading to the Four foot paver walk be removed so that what's left is a paver terrace, correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And that be shown on an updated plan. And that plan. be shown on a new plan, of course. Mm -hmm. right. Any other conditions? That's all I can do. Do we need to see an updated plan before we issue an order of conditions? Or? If you guys are comfortable with him submitting it, mm -hmm. and I. No, I'm okay with him, with him yeah, saying he'll do it. He's removing something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good luck. All right. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. That's a D. What's that? I'm oh, sorry, sir. Yeah, with Bill Brad Street. Bill Brad Street, town meeting member, precinct one. Is this a public meeting? Yeah. Yes. So. So that if we have a question, we should yeah, do you, know, you normally sorry. ask if the audience has any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did uh, you have a question on the past project, Bill? Not at this time. But we should have I'm just asking to make sure that... We'll make sure we open it up, right? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, item D, notice of intent for 7 Trinity Street, DEP file number 14-1336. Uh, who is here to represent the applicant? Good evening. My name is Greg Bernard, representing the applicant. I'm the uh, John DeCools Engineering here in Danvers. And again, I'd like to give my butter notification, which includes the DET notification. I'm here to represent Kelly Reedy, the owner of 7 Trinity Road. Located in the Woodvale area behind the high school. Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, single family residence, ranch, slab foundation. Relatively level lot in the rear of the lot. There is uh, a stream with an associated bank. And she's proposing uh, an approximately 24 by 32 garage on uh, the front right of the existing dwelling. And also with a 14 and a half foot pump out addition to the right of the building. 99.9% um, .9 of the proposed project is within the buffer zone. Um, it is all outside the 25 and the 35 foot buffer zones. It is uh, 52.7 from the top of the bank. The majority of the proposed garage which is, um, again, the addition is shown kind of grayish blue shaded. The majority of the proposed garage is located on existing flat, bituminous flat driveway, flat. so that portion of the driveway will come out um, to compensate or to take care of uh, any additional runoff um, from the roof runoff. We are proposing uh, drains leading into subsurface chamber to take care of the um, recharge volume required. 
We're also proposing a uh, straw waddle or silt stock at the conservation's request. Uh, roughly 10 feet behind the proposed addition, just to allow room for a machine to be able to get in there and dig any footings. Again, this is a ranch, so we're only talking about a slab foundation, hmm. digging down deep enough uh, just for the frost walls. Any of the uh, material um, taken out for excavation will be stored on site uh, to the right of the proposed addition, and there's plenty of room out front. The majority of that material will go back into the ground. Any material that is left over, uh, one of the occupants of the house, um, for sure a landscaping firm, plenty of that material will be trucked off site and they'll be able to use that. With that, I'll open up any questions the commission may have. Um, is this going to change the runoff of, like, with the addition of, like, all that more room space? Yeah, we're, we're, we're adding impervious, and to, and to compensate for that, we're going to recharge it with the chambers on the right side of the addition. Is that um, existing, or no? Is that existing? Uh, Currently. No. No, it's proposed. So the bulk of this is going over an existing driveway? The majority of the garage portion is. Right. Uh, this 14 and a half foot bump out on the right side, that's all uh, grass area now. Mm. Okay, but you're making allowances for that with the underground chamber. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, what can you tell me about the underground chamber? How do you calculate? Uh, are you doing some sort of calculation to yes. equate? So well, what, what we first decide is how much of the impervious area are we going to have, and that's shown near the upper right-hand corner. So, we're, so the project's going to consist of about 1,100 square feet of, of impervious area. Uh, I'm ignoring the fact that some of it's already on you're treating it all. Driveway. Yeah. I'm treating it. I'm treating it all. Yeah. So with the uh, um, the gutters uh, lead into the downspouts. The downspouts will lead into the chamber. Now each chamber has a certain amount of volume it's able to hold. When you add the uh, stone below and stone around it, and that's got 40 foot voids, that also adds volume. Um, there is a standard calculation. Under the state regulations, stormwater regulations, which I use and many of the neighboring uh, towns use, depending on the type of soil, the class of soil you have, how, right. much, how much you should infiltrate, how much you should recharge. Yeah, do you know what that soil is there? Uh, that's a Merrimack soil, which is considered a hydrologic soil group B. And because it's a hydrologic soil group B, uh, under the state regulations, they want you to recharge uh, 0.35 inches times your impervious area. So that calculation is also shown. So they want to be able to make sure that you can recharge or at least store 32 and a half cubic feet. Is that like the test we saw on Route 1? You dig a hole, you put some water, and you watch it. So a test pit. That's a percolation yeah. test you'd normally done for, for, for septic systems. Yeah, but, but that's they, not required for this. We okay. saw that uh, on, a, a a, park, yeah. on a dog park. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious if you did that. For a project like this, again, if it was... You just look at soil type and... Right. and the, 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 the state just requires you... They, they don't require you to do a, 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 a percolation test mm. for a project of this size. No. Um, you look at the soil maps that are, that, that are available, and that gives you the soil type, which also has them associated with a hydrologic soil group. And, and A is um, um, very good drainage. B is good B drainage. is better. C oh, not as good. Is not as good and so forth. B is pretty good. Um, so, so it's pretty you good. Have good soils like that. They want you to put as much water back into the ground as possible. Yeah. If it's crummy soils, like if it's a ledge soil, that water is running off already. Yeah. So you adding a roof doesn't make any real changes. No, yeah. But, but in this case, it does. So we're going to put that. I like that you're treating the whole area as impervious, even though some was already impervious, and you're calculating for that you as, well. as well. Yeah. Not a big difference. Mm -hmm. with yeah. The, uh, so did you say you got the soil type from maps? You didn't dig test pits, or did you dig That's test correct. pits? That's correct. We did not dig test pits. Okay. Um, I think it's, I'm, in tr I'm wondering if we should ask for a test pit in the, where the recharge chamber is going to go, just to make sure. Because I know the maps mm -hmm. are generally accurate, but it's not going to function properly if it's not really what the soil is there. Well, that is, so or it's more known the soil, but we, 
you remember when we were at the dog park, he showed us the soil, how it was crunchy, yep. and he identified it? Right. That's how you, is that how you identified this soil? You take it up, you look at it? You... Again, that's, that, that's uncommon, mm. I would say, for, I don't know the magnitude of the dog park project. No. Uh, Bigger than that, yeah. But even for uh, the state stormwater regulations, under a, like say a five acre project, they, they, they don't require a percolation test. As a matter of fact, they don't want you to use percolation no. tests. No, no, I think she was really just trying to find out how do you know it's B soil? Just from the soil maps, which are yeah. generally accepted throughout the, yeah. the engineering yeah. field. If you're fine yeah. with that. And I would fine. say, especially because this project didn't trigger stormwater standards, yep. but the applicant still did take measures yeah. to treat stormwater runoff. Okay. Um, if you're fine with that's it, then that's my fine. Opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get the point. Well, yeah. Are these plantings that you're showing to the existing. existing plantings? I'm not showing any proposed plantings. Okay. How is the existing roof going to meet with the new roof? Because is there a gutter on the existing roof, at the edge of the existing roof? Oh, do you guys have a, uh, a gutter on the existing roof? You do. Yeah. Hmm. Um, that I can't intelligently explain. All I can tell you is that the addition is going to have the gutters and it's the additional, it's the addition runoff that we're going to be taking care of. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out, so is the additions roof lower than the existing? I'm just trying to figure out how that's well, going to meet um, up. Well, it's a two-car garage and there'll be um, a bit of storage above, so let's say a half story above the garage. So, so that roof above the garage will be higher mm -hmm. than the existing house. Okay. Is it all being grabbed together, all being pulled together off the roof and the addition and everything going into the recharge? Only the addition roof is going, is going into, into the recharge. recharge, yeah. So basically from the from the peak of the addition moving towards the existing house, there's a gutter there now, but we're that's not going to oh, be no, able to remain, right? House, no, there's not a gutter on, that, on on the right side of the existing house. There is there is not a gutter. No, so how's that water I thought, being oh, captured? Sorry, I thought they just said there the was one. The line is running lengthwise. Yeah. So the, the, the downspouts are like the Okay, I miss, I'm sorry. I thought they right, said so there was a, uh, a gutter So the ridge line that. goes across. Yeah. All right, so right. there is no valley. You're talking the about the existing, yeah. David? Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, it's all now. Garen. Okay. So your point was that the water is flowing off the ridge to the front. I'm assuming that they're going to be able to capture that with the way that the new roof is sloped. I don't think that's going to be anything. It's going to intercept it without creating a valley on the existing. Yeah. Well, building. he's not. They're not trying to capture the water off the existing house. Just right. off the addition. I think we were yeah. just questioning where that I was just trying to figure out how they going. meet up, basically. Yeah. And you can't tell from this. Question <laughs> on the erosion control. I see it's like ending at the patio. What is, is the patio like elevated? How is it? How the is it? Up about six inches. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know how they were going to meet up too. Um. Okay. And the jurisdiction is because of. <coughs> Uh, wetlands on the, the slope of the, the stream? The bank to the intermittent stream. The intermittent stream is, so the there, there's is no... Shown, the bank is shown as a solid red line with uh, flag numbers on it. Right. And the Danvers, um, no touch and no disturbing the bill is shown dashed. Right here, so right, and then 35, and then right, 100 right, out here. Right out front, dark, black. It's interesting, when you look at a GIS, it's definitely a channelized like it comes from, it's fed from Frost Fish Brook, but mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure there's a 90 degree angle somewhere up close to the house where the water is channelized and then put under the road. Yeah. Um, so it's, I would say back here it is pretty straight and channelized, right? There's no question about it. Yeah. It's about an eight foot drop yeah. from the top of the bank down to the brook. Mm -hmm. well, where does the brook drain to? I'm sorry? Where does it drain to? It goes, uh, it meets up with fish. Uh, Does it hook back? As it, gets to the, as it gets to the high school and then become, then, and now you're, at that point you're under riverfront jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But it, it drains into frostbite fish. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you had mentioned possibly stockpiling some materials in the front yard. Would that be generally in front of the house, or do you think you'd yes, be? Yes, just to be out of the 100 foot buffer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking if it. Okay, all set. That's we can um, provide some temporary erosion control around that uh, pile. I mean, if this pile is going to be here for a couple of days up to a week, um, you know, we can surround it with, it with extra sill stuff. And cover it if you need to? And cover it. Cover it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, does anyone else have any other questions? No? No, I just no. add that because it's the Woodvale area, there's a, 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 there's a lot of these brooks throughout, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of people are well within the 100, uh, and it's just by necessity that they can't get out of it. Right. You know, really. Yeah. We see a lot of that frost fish brook, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Say that three times fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if there's no further questions, um, open it to the public. Take open it. it up. Does anyone in the audience have any questions? <laughs> I like Bill. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion that we uh, issue a <coughs> order of conditions for 7 Trinity Street. I'll make a motion <coughs> to issue an order of conditions for uh, 7 Trinity Street, DEP file number 14-1336. Um, did we want to specify any of those? Yeah. So, stockpiling kept outside of the 100-foot buffer towards the front of the property, uh, covered in given erosion control around that and also the erosion control uh, coming off that patio. Is there anything else? No. Uh, no, we're comfortable with the the recharge system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, motion's been made. No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We grilled you, huh? <laughs> Thank you guys. This one your side. I think it's mine. Okay. I ask lots of questions now, even if I'm not, especially if I don't know what I'm talking about, then I really ask questions. I mean, do you see your face so that people think I'm done? Are you all set? Item E, notice of intent for 48 Riverside Drive. I'm sorry, 48 Riverside Street, DEP file number 14-13. That means that uh, we do not have a DEP number for this uh, project. Is that correct? Correct. Then who's here to represent the applicant? My name is Alex Carp. I'm here to represent uh, the applicant. Um, I'm of the area. These are all existing structures in that area. This is the proposed structure. Proposed structure. As you can see, the, uh, there are extensive tidal flats um, adjacent to the property. This is 48 meters side right here. And where's the proposed uh, pier? Where is it? The this is a representation of it. Your and as that extends, how does that compare with other piers existing? So 
it's it's interesting on this on this side of the river. It, it will be significantly longer, but this is uh, closer to the channel. They have more draft. Um, this is approximately. This would get our float to the same uh, offset from the main low water contour as the pier, the existing pier at 42 and 46. However, it's worth noting that their fixed structure ends here and here, and access to the float, uh, access to the water the floats is made by bottoming out on the water. That's the extension of the pier. What part of that gets pulled in during the winter? So this is uh, the gangway and the float. And what does that leave for length, remaining length? 190 feet. After that's pulled in? Correct. With the gang, with everything, how, how far does it extend? Uh, approximately 240, depending on uh, size. How does that affect navigation for smaller boats, rowboats, kayaks, etc.? So as you can see in this area, in this area of the Danvers River, there is uh, there are extensive tidal flats. So at low tide, there is no water. No. This. And the channel is very faint. You can see it over here. Uh, I believe. Can you just point out some landmarks? I'm trying to get where that sure. bend is. Yeah. This is uh, Riverside Street. I don't have a, uh, a larger view of this. Remember when we went to Daryl Parker's house? Mm -hmm. The branch of. Yeah. Daryl Parker's house is that dock up so, there on the Which line. one? The top one? I think it's the top one or... Where's Daryl Parker's? That was just built. It was ju we just looked at recently. Oh, that may be... He's 42 yeah. Riverside Street. Okay, that's So if you're 40... Right? Yeah, so that's his pier, the one that's popping out right there. Okay. That's the one we went to visit. Yeah. Does and that that's, give you that's, some... That's the new construction? Because that was just the year before last, right? Yeah, I don't know what photo that is. I would assume it is, because his dock before was underwater. So the, no. This is uh, April 2018. Yep, so that's I, it. This, this is several years old. That can't be it. They may have improved it. No. I believe there, there was yeah. a recent construction on the other side of the river. Sorry, it's the one right next to us. So you can see in the picture on the right, it's not fully constructed. And then on the left, it is right next to the dash. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that um, a dock? Are you saying I that's Daryl Parker? I think what you, you'll find. Maybe the property owner knows. Do you know which one Daryl Parker is? That's this pier right here. No, I'm sorry. This is Daryl Parker is. Okay. I know who either one. That's existed for it's quite some time. Is that on Riverside? Right? Yeah, so that is. I think mean, that's us. Yeah. Okay. This, so do you know where continue. you are, Mike? These are. Four. Yeah, well, I do if you're correct about yeah. that, yeah. So, go ahead, Mike. So uh, we were talking about the navigation. That that becomes flats on low tide. It's just a flat. Correct. The whole thing. Yeah, it's very. Uh, it's a very shallow grade. It's uh, getting up to about two percent once we get to here. And when the when the, and water still there's still water in the channel at that point. There is water in the channel, but it's that stretch. So it's water. Yeah. So everybody tries to get as close to the far out to the channel as they can. Uh, within reason, uh, the length we're constrained in many ways. We don't want to build a pier across the entire. Yeah, river. if you want to, people will. Port. Yeah, how's a boat going to come by? Yeah, for, for several reasons, we we uh, are considering a similar ultimate length. Um, but also, we don't want the float to be grounding out. Tide. Yeah, well, we have a lot to consider here, right? Yes. So, and there's no, there's no DEP file number. No, What's also, out there now? I have to be honest, the comments that we got today, I yeah. did not. You talked about that booklet, and I, yeah. I, we yeah, have, we got them today. I'd like to yeah. look yeah. at that booklet. Right Do now, there is, uh, there's nothing. There's, this is the fence line where we show the pier starting. Uh, and salt marsh. 
So you, there never was a pier associated with that property? No, no, no. <laughs> Next yeah. door, next door to have a pier. Yeah. So, uh, this locust climb up. Give you an idea of the site is. Yeah, through 35, mm -hmm. through the street. Yeah. yeah, we know the, you come in and out of there. We know the. Who were the comments from that we hmm, saw today? Marine Fisheries. Sorry, yep. Divi yeah, Division of Mean Marine Fisheries. So they provide a comment um, on the shellfish habitat. I don't have you had a chance to read these? I, I, I did. Yep. So I don't think. Um, and then also great recommendations on actual building and design of the proposed structure. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is always we always make an effort to comply with the uh, the DEP guidelines for small box and years. Um, and there are a lot of constraints with this site that make it difficult to look at a smaller structure. Um, and if there are any comments uh, from the Division of Marine Fisheries that we need to address more directly. Yes. You see this picture, uh, I, I'm looking at page three on, on the photographs. Sure. That pier there, mm -hmm. Who's the, where is that? No. That is number 46, Riverside. Show, that's the next door neighbor. Yes. It's built, it's, this is more or less on the property. Yeah. It is? Yes. You said that's been there a long time. Yes. Hmm. Okay. See that pier? Right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the well, height? You're sorry. Go. No, no. I'm just going to ask what you're asking now. You ask. So where the salt, where the the height, the pier yeah. is crossing the salt marsh. What's your height Correct. over the salt marsh there? <laughs> so where we intersect the salt marsh, uh, the bottom of the stringer is just over four feet above grade. What's a stringer? <laughs> the, sorry, the, the horizontal frame, the, the framing that runs longitudinally okay. under the decking. Mm -hmm. um, it's in section U, it's these. Elements. Okay. It's typically considered the lowest part of the. And what, are, what will the uh, pier rest on? Uh, driven piles. Driven, how are they driven? Uh, vibratory or impact. Yeah, wasn't that recommended or suggested that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And the right. other, right. Right. Barge. The other was the helical, right? Right. Mm -hmm. oh. We we envision uh, ninety percent of this work uh, being performed from floating barge. Um, obviously not down the island salt marsh. There may be some uh, minor construction uh, land side um, in the existing lawn area. Uh, for the access stair and uh, that first set of piles. That mm -hmm. Right here at the existing fence line. The work has to be done with the tides? Correct, yes. Do you know the exact area of the shellfish habitat? I, they, don't, I don't have that with me. I, uh, the area of the impact or the area of the habitat the, the mapped area of the habitat, because in these recommendations, it's saying that the float should be elevated at least 30 feet in shellfish habitat. So you had noted 18, but if the float will be in the habitat? I believe it's 30, I, I believe it's 30 inches. 30 um, inches. Did I say feet? Sorry, 30 yeah, yeah. inches. But, uh, yes, so that, uh, we get into a little bit of a cycle on the recommendations uh, to minimize the impacts there. Um, in uh, shellfish habitat, our understanding that the performance standard is 30 inches, mm -hmm. but the recommendation for uh, small box and piers, where it's not feasible to do that, essentially the float would be, so from the bottom of the float, it would be 30 inches down to the mud, mm -hmm. and then whatever the free board of the float was on top of that. So it's 
it's above my waist anyway at low tide. Um, but certainly, is there a the medium is, in between 30 and 18? Say it again. I, I'm almost wondering if there's a, a, me, a number in between. Yeah. But I mean, it depends on. Uh, our intent is to put adjustable posts in there as well. Um, so. How does that work? Uh, the timber posts um, will be made adjustable so that they can be made deeper, keep the float higher up off the bottom. Let's say uh, we are not as deep as we thought we were there, um, or there's something in. What are we saying is the, uh, the acceptable depth taken into consideration of flow of water and habitat, right? The, so the commission has historically granted 18 inches, and that's what the DEP recommends. But in this instance, the Division of Marine Fisheries has said if it's in a mapped shellfish habitat, it has to be 30 inches. So we need to know that. Yes. No, yeah. and we don't know that yet, right? That? The DEP? Uh, the, the recommendation we got yeah. today. Yeah. Like right. three. And he has that? They have that? You're looking for the resource area. Shellfish habitat. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's, this isn't like Daryl's. There's no, no old pier to go out and look at and say, oh, that's got to come down. <laughs> and when you're at high tide, is there clearance for kayakers or paddle boarders to go underneath or what's the clearance what's the what's the clearance underneath at high tide sure um, mean eye water occurs right here this line and the clearance of the pier that stringer to that grave is five feet plus it's about five and a half feet that pier is made to uh, this this length of the pier is fixed. Fixed. So what would be, like she said, at high tide, would there be clearance under there? Five, five feet. There'd be five feet at high tide? To the, to the water level? No. Yeah. To grade, there's five feet. Oh, I was at, asking, sorry, I was high, asking. At the high water line. Okay. So, splitting hairs. Assuming that mean high water, that's where the water level no the most, yeah. Then yes, five and a half feet. Five and a half feet? Hmm. We are sloping down gently there. So when I say we have four, just over four feet of clearance, the, the salt marsh, that's the minimum. It's increasing. Yeah, there. but that pier is going to be at a fixed, uh, fixed. It's, uh, and then it's the float that's going to go up and down with the, yes, sir. With the oh, tide. Oh, yeah. And what else? The... Um, the floating gangway? The gangway as well, yeah. So pier to gangway to float? Correct, yep. yeah. Yeah. And then the boat will be tied off on the, there'll be a boat tied off at the. Uh, at this time, I believe the intent is for kayaks, but. Yeah, for right now, we're, we're just, we just want it so we can launch our kayaks. And You're going to do all this for kayaking? Gonna, we're gonna, if I'm going to buy a boat, I'm going to get a boat. <laughs> just wondering. You're not going to get the biggest boat in the room. Why? It's probably out of our jurisdiction. I'm going to ask the question. Why are you going through all of this? Curious. So is I. Effort to to launch kayaks. I mean, you could launch kayaks from oh, the shore. Oh, I want it so I can. Well, we want it so we can go swimming. Because right now, if you walk in the back of my house, I can't walk out into the water because of the mud. I've tried. Trust me. It's <laughs> you, you walk okay. So, yeah, maybe even it's, at half tide, you have sorry. difficulty. Access. So even you just would just even like to walk out there and have a cup of so coffee and be out on your. <laughs> yeah, just, I get that. Go swimming, maybe tie up a, yeah. a raft so we can just putz around. But eventually, have a little dinghy boat, which I would go into my. Does anyone swim in that river there? I mean, I know it's Sandy Beach. Oh, yeah. 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 My neighbors. Yeah. I was, I was at that. Coast. We saw them when we first moved in. I was like. Ah. That was in the recommendations, is instead of mooring a boat to the end of the pier, have something smaller to access a boat kept on a mooring. So, yeah. 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 That yeah. lines up with the recommendation. Okay, uh, where do we go from here? We, well, 
Can't wait to continue. We, ha we have to look at all the impacts, right? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we have to wait for a number. Yes, yeah, so also right. in the application, um, the applicant had noted there was an exemption providing for the, uh, I'm in the memo. What page are you on? Um, the second one? E, you're right on E. Yeah. All right. Um, the application was missing um, narratives on the performance standards for all of the resource areas that are being altered. Mm. So usually we like to see the applicant list the performance standard and how it's being met. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't provided with as much detail, so I know you guys are working on that. Um, right. So I think that's something the commission... Everything that you have here, alterations in water, circulation, yeah. sediment, alterations in sediment, change in water quality, submerged. So that would be like land under ocean or salt marsh, land, mm -hmm. land subject to coastal storm flowage, having them list out how it's being impacted and how um, it won't have adverse impacts or how the project's going to mediate those impacts. I just want to, uh, just to clarify, we do get into the resource areas and describe the impacts, but in my understanding correctly, you want us to formalize language how you meet those perf all those, those performance standards well when we talked about the 18 versus the 30 inches that is dependent on what whether there's shellfish so we need to know that i guess yeah he has that. and so these the pilings are going to be am i reading this right 20 feet apart every 20 feet you'll have pilings Correct. Yes, okay. correct. On, on its length. In section, uh, the pier is only, uh, the proposed pier is four feet wide. Mm -hmm. So we go out to the pier, then the gangway, and then lastly, the, uh, the, the float. When at, at low tide, uh, how is that float sitting? What is it sitting on? Uh, you have sheet three. You do. Okay, there's a picture here. So that uh, that detail of the flow of the gangway uh, is to represent the variability from high to low tide. Uh, so the gray yeah. line work would be at low tide. We would support the flow above the mud line uh, with these adjustable posts. Okay, because I never heard of adjustable posts, but is, is that to allow for some settling? Uh, so are you're, you you're, saying the posts adjust with the water, with the okay. tide? No. You're trying to reduce the square footage of what's in the mud, basically. Yes, is that don't right? want it to bottom out, so the posts would... So instead of the whole float being in the mud? The mud line, but the, the bottom of the float, the flotation wouldn't... No, I get that, but when you say adjustable posts, are you saying the posts vary with the water level? No. Or that you manually will adjust post to adjust to a de to uh, address settling. It, it could be for settling, but yes, you admit this is like a one-time thing. So yeah. you, know, you would set the height of that post. Yeah. So you can level out. And then there'll be some post. settling, and then you make your adjustment. Is that right? It's possible. Yeah. At, every, at every low tide, the float is going to rest on those four posts. Is it four, one on Unless each corner? it's a plus tide, and it's. Floating, but yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, four to six. Four to six. What was the term you said? A plus tide? What is that? Uh, mm -hmm. if, the, if the tide is high, then you need more water. Oh. It's not as low as it usually is. Not as low as usual. <laughs> All right. All right, so what do they need to come back with? They need, they need a DEP number. Yeah. Right? How Some about, data. Uh, from chapter 91. Is that required here? Well, he needs to apply for that, and to yeah. apply for that, he, he needs us to the show. Okay. Do it um, the shellfish map addressing the performance standards. Um. Is that information available from neighboring applications? Or? Yeah, if he, he could look at Daryl Parker's or the other four docks right. on that street, yeah. but. To be no, fair, each mean, area. Do we have that information as a result of other applications? Uh, it would be specific to that application. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we don't have a leg stump, and it's as though there's a lot of I shellfish mean, in GIA, there. GIS, the, the as much as the state mapping system provides. Yeah. But he may have access to more detailed. So how will databases. he determine it? You can ask him. How are you going to determine that? GIS. We. we so we no one's going to go out and look in the water and maybe scoop up and see if there's any shellfish there. Uh, no, I don't. We wouldn't go that far. <laughs> we we have it mapped and we have the resource area impact in the narrative. We just don't have that line work for on the plan. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming the shellfish suitability area is somewhere out here to probably solve. So you, it's there then. It's probably there. It, yes, it is there. Yeah. We have impacts mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's uh, 61.5 square feet of impact. That's attributed to the, the anchor blocks above being low water for the float and each of these piles. Would the mooring block, the mooring blocks would stay out there year round? Okay. Yeah. Where are the mooring blocks? On Drawing two. The ones that the floor will serve gonna, on. So there's four of them, four. is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're attached to the float. Oh, okay. All right. So they're each three and a half. What are their dimensions? The concrete. blocks themselves? Uh, Not the height, but the dim actual dimension of the block. Three and a half by three and a half feet. Three and a half square. They're that big? Okay, will you be prepared to come back in four weeks? Uh, yeah, for another book. Good. Good. Our Thank next meeting is when? Uh, January the 9th? Is that right? Yes. Is that right? Yep. Uh, I think just, we also, uh, we, David Smith filled in because had a discussion. Yes. Uh, there is a river, river committee. Yes, so he yeah. will be going to river committee um, next week to get comment from him as well as the harbor master. Um, it's okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. public comment yeah, back there. Concom. So concom on the uh, January 9th, and they'll be coming back. Okay, questions? Bill Bradstreet, town meeting member, precinct one. I had a couple of questions. One, when you talked about the blocks, it was three and a half by three and a half. Not only do you have dimensions, there's three of them. It's square. Yes. How the, deep the is it? The commissioner asked me to put the, uh, the area plan. Okay. But, uh, likely two feet. So it's a two foot thick block, three and a half by three and a half. Is that what you're saying? Exact, uh, I'm just curious when you talk when you when you gave it a three and a half by three and a half that's the surface area that's the surface area and my question was how deep is it so oh, I'm, okay the other one was I'm not sure how long ago the town dredged the channel I believe they mentioned it they do it periodically I'm not sure when it's going to be done next and when you talk about dredging the channel I don't know how wide the channel is. With what he is proposing, is that going to interfere with the In channel fact, being dredged, or will the, uh, the channel itself interfere with what he's trying to do? That's a question for the harbor master. Mm hmm. Never come in. Well, in other words, how, when you're at full extension, how far are you from the channel? Um, we're not the exact number on. Right now, uh, that is uh, a detail for Chapter 91. Um, you could provide us two, that, though. This is 240 feet from the center line of the channel, but the channel, we don't have the exact dimensions. We estimate With. approximately 180 feet is conservative. From the from your float? From the eastern extent of the float. To the channel. To the edge of the channel. Edge of the channel. This the near edge. Yeah. Put it into perspective. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. If these buoys roughly represent the limits of the channel. Can you see that? You want to come up? No, I'm, I, 
I can picture where he's talking about. I, my concern was, as I think the towns would be, if what's being proposed here will interfere with what the town wants down there. That's a wide channel for the boat traffic. And when they dredge, which they will, I'm not sure how far in the future, whether the dredging will interfere with what he's proposing or with what he's proposing will interfere with what the town wants to do by dredging the channel. Again, I don't know how wide they go or how deep they go, but they do periodically dredge the channel. It's expensive, so it isn't done too often. Right. The permitting process is long and costly. I think that's part of the problem. Just a couple of questions. I don't expect an answer tonight, but it's a couple of questions. Well, the harbor master would, yeah. would be the one that would probably know that. I mean, when was the last dredging done? I can't answer. I can't answer that. It was done yeah. several years ago, but it, they do it periodically. What the period is, I don't know, but I believe I've heard at a selectman's well, meeting. Well, your point they, is that they can't interfere with proposed dredging, of course, and that would make sense. Right. That they can't do that. I don't think it's within our jurisdiction. It's not a decision that. If, we if it's make. if it's not a question, you can answer. That. That's fine. But I wanted to ask the question. Mm -hmm. We're working on that in general with the harbor master. Uh, building up to a dredging project is probably minimally two to three years out. Um, and these are all questions that we've got to get. You know what? So I know Chris will be able to chime in on this particular application, but I, I, um, I wouldn't hazard a guess as to who's interfering with who. But I mean, that's part of it is that we all want access to a channel because we want the yeah. channel there. But Aaron, he raises a good point, and that is that we've never really had a determination of how far out someone can go. And they should, we should know if there's a we've cap a on that, so we can yeah, say. We've got some, over the last summer, speaking with the Harbor Master, Dave Fields, myself, um, before Jordan came back, we've got some information on that, and I think, again, we've talked about kind of trying to get It'd be useful. That. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll likely be able to share some information, again, not for this particular project, but just in general of how the dredging and what are some of the guidelines that we might um, share with the commission as to how to handle these yeah. fears. But I don't think anything in this application yeah. is affected. And you know what? What didn't happen, it should, because it world most, you haven't been out on the river with the harbor master, right? No, you no, haven't. And, uh, we should be going out at some point and looking at all these areas from the river perspective. And uh, so we did do that some years ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, we yeah. Let's schedule that for July. Yeah. <laughs> Boat's out. Boat's out. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a nice yeah. one. At high and low tide. Yeah. You want to make your visit both at high and low tide yeah. also. Well, low tide, we're not going anywhere. Well, it, you, at low point. tide, you could see yourself by you could go with the channel being dredged in the past, yeah, and again, yeah. I only asked the question because I don't know, because of the cost and the permitting, how deep or how wide the dredging could go yeah. or should go. We're going to look into that. Yeah. Okay. The uh, the mooring blocks that he talked about in the channel, they're either removed by the owner, or they disappear when he has to start all over with another one. Then the harbor master will determine where he can put his mooring block. So it's it's something I'm sure the he's aware of or should be aware of. Uh, it's I thought that's what I heard him say. Okay, all right. Just want to bring it up. Any further questions from the audience? Uh, I'd entertain a motion that we continue to our January the ninth meeting. I'll make a motion that we continue uh, the public hearing for what's the address? Here? 48, 48 Riverside. Yeah, for 48 Riverside DEP file number. Well, we don't have a number yet without a DEP file number. Do you, okay. Excuse me, one second, Mike. Do you expect to have a DEP number by then? By then? We, we do. The uh, It was filed on the 27th. Um, I would assume. There were. There were there was another NOI file on that same Well, that's okay. So 48. Um, okay. So we're, if we're you don't have a number, you'll let her know. I'll, I'll yeah. check it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, uh, uh, so I, st I make a, a motion that we continue the public hearing for 48 Riverside Street 
uh, to the next scheduled date of January 9th. Motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See you then. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That was a good discussion. All right, next up is item F, Notice of Intent for 305R Maple Street, Lot 6, DEP file number 14-1332. Uh, who is here to represent the applicant? Good evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you for having me on this board. My name is Scott Cameron with the Board of Group. I'm here on behalf of the book of this LLC. It's an application that's been kicking around for a few months now. Um, set up here. Um, the reason being is we were, we were kind of waiting for the resolution of uh, the session on the meeting right away um, and the relocation of that. So uh, last week, uh, the public meeting the planning board that did vote um, in favor of um, relocating the right away. Um, our next step would be going to the uh, board of selectmen. Them, that we can memorialize it. Uh, but we feel this time we want to move forward with the lots. Uh, we have submitted them uh, in our own packets. Uh, so I want to make plans for these, uh, in particular uh, lot six, and then we'll have uh, lot seven. Um, we're talking um, really about riverfront area. And that's the that resource uh, jurisdiction that we can do on this application. Uh, so the context. On the front of the campus here, as you recall from the hearing for the roadway, this is kind of an aggregation of many properties uh, that, were, that were originally subdivided starting back in 1915. Uh, so 305 R is the first property, and I highlighted that in purple here. And then 303 to 309 uh, in 1923, uh, they also established a right to access these lots, and they held it for themselves a right of way, and that's what we've been talking about. The town did? With the planning board. No, the, the original heirs of the estate oh. uh, reserved that, that, that right of way, and that eventually passed down as they separated out pieces. That's been what we've been discussing with the planning department, uh, and that's what we uh, are proposing to relocate uh, to the proposed roadway, and then out in this direction uh, to provide access out to the Fox Run open space parcel and ultimately to the future, uh, hopefully, rail trail. Um, so where we're talking about right now, uh, what we filed on, and I talked about the timeline here, uh, this is an existing parcel, and this blue is an existing parcel, and that's the real estate that exists in the ground today. We're proposing work that is partially within uh, 303 to 309 and partially within 305 R as they exist today, and that would be a future subdivision lot, which we're calling lot six, and that's how we're identifying this work area under this application. The entirety of the work that we're before you tonight is on 305 near Maple Street. To make that straightforward. You mean that on an existing lot? On an existing not lot. On part, or not on the subdivision yeah, as and proposed. And I'll get into where I'm heading with that. Um, so the work we're proposing, these are the single family house lot uh, applications we filed. There's going to be three of them uh, we're discussing tonight. Uh, lot six sits here on the on the bottom of the page. You see the proposed subdivision road, so that would be future that was approved under a separate order. And then you have the lot here. What I've highlighted is the work within the 200 foot riverfront area. So that orange line, you'll see all the plans to the riverfront area. It goes through about the middle of the property. And the green would be yard area. Uh, the brown would be the dwelling structure, and then I show the, the topography on this line, too. Um, so wait, are we looking at an existing structure here? It's a proposed house. We're talking about a proposed okay. single-family house construction. But we're looking at someone's lot, not yes. not as it's divided, lot. but as it exists yes. now? As it, uh, yes, because these lots would not be memorialized until the plans are eventually recorded. It's proposed. The road is built, so it's a proposed house lot. Uh, when we record, uh, will be in order of conditions. It's going to stay on 305R and 303 to 309. That's where you'll see it in the title, although this would be part of a lot that we're talking about. So confusing. So where 305R is an existing number now, a real yes, number? That's an actual It's lot. the house that's yeah. like on yeah. people. Yeah. So let me get, get to what I'm going to um, In your application packets, I submitted a riverfront uh, area analysis. Um, the through that I identify a series of alternatives as we go through and happy to talk about those. Um, we 
we then received some additional comments from the DPP uh, when we filed this application, and I received some comments from the uh, board of the current uh, on this particular block, and I'll go through those. So as we've gone through this, uh, this, uh, this process to design this lot, our, our effort, of course, is to keep as much work as possible out of the river front area. However, uh, what the section that we can see in our 10.58 uh, says that lots that were created before really the, the creation of the Rivers Protection Act that went into the code are allowed, the commission may allow alteration of the 10% of that riverfront area. And that's what we're talking about, these original lots, because that's what we're really talking about. That's what exists today. They were created, uh, in fact, they predate all much of the statutes because they go back to 1915, 1923. Um, in the DEP comment on the project, what they had asked us to do was to further clarify some of the alternatives um, so I, I did write them out, and I, I can pass this out, but I'd like to uh, read you the comment from DEP and then read to you how I respond to it. Uh, we have this? I think, uh, you don't. I'm going to read it to you, and I can hand this out now if you'd like to follow along. There's copies? Yep. Yeah. I can hand this out to you. Thank you. Down. Scott, sorry, can you clarify for me? So you said an alternative analysis was already done for the... In the NOI. Yep. In the NOI. Yep. Okay. Yep. So DEP states... Since individual lots have not been subdivided, what I was just talking about, and recorded the registry of these, the you have to address this as it exists. As it exists. The proponent must provide an alternative analysis pursuant to the original parcel and the subdivided parcels from any adjacent parcels and other land which can be reasonably obtained within the municipality. And then it to section 10.58, which taught which, which, where you can read this. In addition to 5,000 square feet or 10% allowable riverfront area alteration is also subject to the original lot, but individual lots is currently proposed. Now, I had gone through that and explained that. I think maybe it wasn't as clear as I had hoped it to be, uh, but there's really four parts to this comment. Uh, so they're talking about the different alternatives that I highlighted, you'll see in the letter in green. It says original parcel and subdivided parcel. It's a little confusing how they word that. What they're talking about the original parcel and the subdivided parcel. So really talking about, they're, they're quoting a section from 10.58, they're really talking about the original lots or when they were subdivided. When did they come into creation? And that sets a benchmark in time, okay? Um, now, as I said, these lots go back to 1915 to 1923, which is way ahead of all the Wetland statutes. Um, so, uh, in particular, the wetland statutes that, that we can sort of talk about, the Jones Act in 1963, that was kind of the start of, of wetlands protection regulations. The Hatch Act in 1965, that was the next iteration, bringing in inland and coastal wetlands. And then in 1972, they came together and formed what we have today as Wetlands Protection Act. So we're way ahead of that. So it meets the test for predating the, the regulations. And you do that by going back to the earliest? When they were created, which is 19, they haven't been touched since. So they've been on the ground for a long time, over 100 years, about 100 years. Um, so it meets that test of the alternatives analysis by when they were created. Is, is that clear to everybody? Well, I mean, was there anything that was done over the last 100 years that would have triggered the act or anything post? Seven, let's, say, let's say they had done work and come before you 10 years ago. Yeah. If they had done a river primaries alternatives analysis then, you would have let it, you know, presumably approved work and then you would have restricted any further impact on the river front area at that time. Right. Nothing's happened. They haven't been before you. There's no problem. So nothing. <coughs> so this is the first time we've come before you for work. Um, and the house is too. Um, there's no house on 305R. It's a vacant parcel, 303 or 309. That, that house has been there. That's I believe that house is well over 100 years old. I don't have the exact date, but it's, it's yeah. a house. It's been there for a while. Um, so there's been no work back here. So is it really clear on that part of the alternatives analysis and why we satisfy that? Um, the second second test is talking about adjacent parcels. Uh, How is that an alternative analysis? That's just an explanation, really, isn't it? Well, we meet, we meet the test of coming before. So what that is doing, are we limited to 10% or 5,000 square feet, whichever is greater? You're saying that it doesn't apply. Or are we limited to 5,000 square feet or 10,000, 10% whichever is less? So if you're after that date, if lots were created after that, we would be restricted to only 5,000 square feet of alteration because 10% of it is much greater than that. Yeah. Does that make sense? 
sense. So really, we're just we're trying to decide which do we fall under. So we fall under the lots exist before the regulations. Okay. okay. So everything that comes going to come before us is going to be based on the the uh, uh, assumption that it, you predate the Wetlands Act. Yes. All right. In the Rivers Protection Act, we're talking 1996. That's when that was put into the regulations. Okay. okay. Um, so when we look at alternatives, it asks you to look at adjacent parcels. So what can we do to minimize the impacts of the riverfront area by looking at adjacent parcels? So, so this process was an aggregation of many parcels. And when, when it first came before... Are we going there? No, I think we're... We'll stay here. Yeah. So when it first came before me, it was 305R Maple Street. So this is the first possible thing. I said, all right, well, we have a right-of-way. We can come out, we can build a cul-de-sac or bring access up to this right-of-way, but we're well into the riverfront area, and we can put some lots here. Well, we got to look at getting some of the land to try and pull that out. So we looked at this parcel, and we were fortunate that they, they were willing to put that land in. And then we looked at this property, and then we looked at this property and this property. As we added pieces into this, we kept pulling the road, the proposed road for that, which means we can pull the work on the lots further out. So we kept adding land. There was no land to go this way because these are developed house lots or open space. There's no land to go this way because this is the railroad right away. So are we moving the so road now? No, 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 no. no? I'm just giving you the backstory. So we added adjacent land as we went down. We ended up getting the other three parcels on this side too, which kind of moved to this discussion. But then we had the town piece here and in doing so, we, we tried to acquire that piece that would allow us really to move everything fully out. And we went through this with the roadway order. Um, but we were not able to acquire that land. The town, the town meeting said they wouldn't sell that land. So what happened, we did everything we could to adjacent land to pull this roadway out. And we were fixed at this point. So from this point, we start training the road as fast as possible. And we keep it as far out as we can. Uh, so we did acquire adjacent land, and there's no other land that we could acquire that would result in any less impact in the further front area. And there's no other way to reconfigure the lots? Yeah, we had everything pinched, everything's at the minimum lot areas, everything's at the minimum lot frontages. We had it all pushed fully out, and I'll go through the design in a moment. If the DEP is an asset to look at alternative, is there any other land in the in the town that you could look at to develop? Um, so this is an interesting one, and I I, I struggle with the logistics of this because if somebody has land and it is potentially developed and it has value, you're going to look at that land. But regardless, we did go back and through MLS records, we looked over the time when we put this property under contract to the time two months after we filed the application with the commission. Were there any other properties in the town? That could accommodate an eight lot subdivision. And there was only one that came up that could accommodate it, but that was already under contract, uh, which is now the uh, Scotland Road subdivision over on Dayton Street. Every other house that's been on the market or, or land was either unbuildable, there was wetlands, or was single family homes being sold through the town. Uh, and I did provide a letter from a real estate broker uh, who was involved with this project, which I can hand out, which summarizes his. Please search on the MLS. Okay. So, uh, would you show that where the riverfront impacts, uh, where you impact the riverfront mm -hmm. on there? So, going back to the plan itself. So, the initial plan was submitted, um, and this is where I got into, and it was helpful to have some comments ahead of time because so we've been sitting on this from, from the current. Um, we had the house shifted a little further back into the riverfront river area. We asked for the comments to pull everything up as close as we could and then do some work to kind of keep patios and decks out of the riverfront area. So I did. So th this house in particular was already pushed all the way up against the front yard setback. And what I did, I added to the revision that you received last week that I highlighted in yellow. So that's the zoning setback. So I did move that all the way up and it's sitting, it's one foot off the setback in the front. So which accounts so for So you uh, used. We, were, we got it pinched right as up. As much of the setback. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we pulled the house all the way forward, and then I also reconfigured the deck and the patios where they're just just on the edge of the riverfront area, so they're barely in. So really, the, the work we're talking about in this area is in, it's mainly yard. It's lawn, grading, and the wall. So as I look at the setback and conjunction. Mm -hmm.
One, two, three. So. Okay, sure. What I want to do, I just what am I looking at Scott on this page? Isn't this the riverfront coming right th it. through here? Yep. So is that still that way? Yes. Pretty so the structure. It's going to go right up. Two but the structure. This all, this almost the entire, entirely that's, in front that's of the there. entire lot. Yep. Of the future lot. So I, is, I did I did cut out the so you could look at the two side by side. This was the original submission, and then we changed everything. So I just cut this out of the same plan that I had. Well, well, how much difference did you make? So oh. you see that we had pulled the patio, the deck, the house. So we pulled all that out. So it's just skirting the edge. And now you're you're 156 away, and, and you we were 146. Well, well, what size is that house? It's about a uh, it's about an 18 it's about 800 square foot footprint. It's well, not a huge house. It's a small yeah. house. But theoretically, you could have made the house a little smaller, and it wouldn't be in the river front. Potentially, but we feel it's a it's a very modest house to be oh. to begin with. As well, as well as. it's how, what's the total square foot? It says two story house. Yeah, it would be a two story house. Yeah. So you can see it, what we pulled out. This was the original plan. Mm -hmm. no, it was so it says they choose to build it that 1540. way. So if it's a three thousand square it's foot over three thousand square feet. If it's a full second floor, but <laughs> well, okay, let's assume it is. So, I guess that does include the garage somewhat. Well, but the garage, the, yeah, 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 but the like, living space will be above the garage. Yeah. Well, is it what size that. garage is this? A two car or a one car? This is this is a two car size on this one. Yeah, but it could be. But it could also. You could make a one car garage, and you wouldn't even be in the riverfront. But the 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 house would sell. Nobody has a one car. Garage. Oh, I don't know about that. The, 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 the test is, you know, again, we're allowed to alter up to 10% of that riverfront area because of the date when these lots were created. This was after that. And, and I think the intent of that is kind of a, in a zoning term, to be a grandfathering provision. So saying if you have lots in the ground before these regulations came in, you're allowed more flexibility than if you know the regulations are there and then you're creating lots for coming back after the fact. Okay. Now I'll get into the overall too. So, between this lot and this one other lot that is in the riverfront area, the rest of that riverfront area, we're not proposing any work. So keep in mind, this riverfront area that goes all the way down into this area, all through here, and we're not proposing any other work on any of the other lots. So the only two properties that we'll be talking about today are here and here. Okay, so right. everything behind where you, you pull the house down is going to be like a backyard be left alone so we have 150 feet or more of undisturbed wooded riverfront area that we're not touching what's this the what's the area on that lot again um lot six it's about a half an acre half an acre okay it's 20, uh, oh, i say 20 000. yeah 20, okay just so under half an acre as small as we could we're right on the minimum zoning threshold with everything is it r2 there So the last comment from DEP was to clarify the areas of impact and you see in that letter. The way I broke this down is I, is I took it, on this particular lot it's easy because of all the work in the riverfront area is like 305R. So that's the total impact in the riverfront area. But on the letter, what I did is I summed it up for you between the entirety of the impact of the riverfront area, which would be before this application and the following. On the other, the, you, you have future lot seven here, right? Um, won't won't that house be in the riverfront? Yeah, that's the next application. And I summarize yeah. that too. So the total impact within the riverfront area is under ten percent. So we're meeting the deferred improvement to, to keeping impact. So this on, on excuse me on page two. Yep. Page two of okay. the total alteration yep. is. That's for yeah. both lots. That's for, so because it's 305R and 303 to 309, those are the two parcels. And I sum those up so you can see the total impact on each lot. Right? So, so you're just below. Right. Can I ask how you make sure only 5,260, because you're at 9.9%. Yeah. So how do you, how is that determined in the field to make sure not this, one foot this more? This line would be staked out. And what I did is, from the original plan, this one is like straight new lines. They couldn't cut it any closer. Instead of arcs, <laughs> which are a little hard to build. So yeah. we just stake a corner, you go straight between them. And that's how we ensure it's a good plan. So that would be 
be all staked out. Uh -huh. and, and your conditions required out of a pre-construction site walk where you, you, you check that. All right, I'm just a little confused about the, mm -hmm. so on the plan for lot six, mm -hmm. for the alteration schedule, mm -hmm. existing riverfront area of 305R Maple. Yep. But then it says altered riverfront area of 303 to 309. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be looking at this? If we're looking at existing and altered, shouldn't those be the same lot? That's 305? Uh, I, I do see that. That is a title that should say 305R. You can cross that section, say 305R. That's Good what pick up. About. Okay. And, but then that leads to, on your memo, it mm -hmm. says, it doesn't say 4068, it says 5268. Right. So now There's then. There's a little bit of alteration on lot seven that's also on 305R, that's in the next, next application. Okay. The same comment on all three applications. What's the total lot? alteration, it's both lot. lots? It's right here, Mike. It's on that <laughs> so that's, I tried to clarify. It's, it's this? 268? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's a summary of both. I'm just going to throw out to everybody that this, it states the issuing authority may allow, not must allow. I'm just putting it out there. Hmm. May allow. Hmm. Okay, so basically the, it's 4068 plus the 1108 gives you 5268. Okay. So I was just trying to like straighten out all those. So when you say when you say um, the issuing authority may allow alteration of up to five thousand square feet or ten percent, whichever is greater, on a lot recorded on or before nineteen ninety seven, are we talking about this exist with yep, addressing? Yep. Now does lot seven and lot six encompass that one lot? That's correct. And that's why it works for you. And yeah. so what what happens next? There would not be any further alteration allowed on these properties. This kind of on any of the properties. Well, on lot 305R and 309. Well, no riverfront alter. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. You probably said this before. But what? What is the alteration? Is that the shade? The green shaded area? Yep, that's the green shaded area, and we're 156 feet away. It makes we're on the very outer edge of the of the 100 to 200 foot zone on the riverfront area. So we kept it. Pretty far outside. You know, look at it like an RDA threshold. You're talking about 50 feet, typically on, on like a wetland buffer zone. So we're 100 feet out plus another 50, and right on that outside edge of the of the buffer. So again, a lot of effort over a lot of time, requiring a lot of real estate to minimize these impacts to the extent possible. Well, to maximize lots, the number of lots. Yeah. If we were coming here with one lot in one single house, we would have still been asking for 10%. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, people want to use what their land was subdivided for back when it was subdivided. They didn't, you know, 1923, nobody had any idea they were going to mm -hmm. using this land. And that's why you see a lot of properties that old that are developed right down to a river. That's what people did back then, but yeah. this property didn't happen to be developed. Okay. Do you have more? That's all I have on this one. So um, what are you looking for today? We're looking for an order of conditions for this lot, this application. Well, I think the good question to ask in general now, I, I feel like we should go back to the alternative analysis because you did just walk us through it. So are you looking for the commission to confirm that they agree with you that there are no, no alternative alternatives for the project. Reasonable, yeah, reasonable alternatives. So I think that would be a good discussion for the commission to have, is the project as it's being presented now, do you believe, or has Scott shown sufficient evidence that there isn't an alternative? Well, I suggested that they make a smaller garage, but he says nobody will buy the house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. <laughs> and and we'll, you know, mine too, I did also take in, we did pull it further out, so we've already Move everything forward, consolidate everything. We're right on that edge. Do you have the number of the, like the amount of square feet you were able to move out based on the old and the new? Between 12. Um, so right on the, I'm looking at distance to the dimension yep. 156. And it was 149. Before we were 149, so we pulled out another seven feet away. So, and I felt that 150 was an important number. Get out to that last 25%, you know, the very edge of the riverfront area. We pull that further out and scale this. So, 
I don't have the exact area, but I'll show you. So if you moved further away, is this 4068 still correct? I adjusted that. That's okay, that's adjusted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's important that, you know, we really minimize, you know, pervious areas. We're, we're limiting it mainly for this yard. And I felt that was a very, you know, compared to when we started with just 305R, we had a room in the riverfront area, you know, because it was the only property we had at that time. Do we... Do you have the measurement on the distance from the 200 foot to the edge of the lawn? Like the, no, um, the width of the green area. As like far how, as the width this way? No, oh, like from the back of the house out towards. It's 35 feet here. Sorry, from where to? So the, 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 okay. the depth okay. of the yard, 35 feet, which, okay. you know, again, 30, 35 feet, we felt that was a reasonable yard. It wasn't, you know, 50 foot, 60 foot. It's enough to go out and play catch and have a yard to use. Hey, Scott, would you just, looking at uh, the second page of your handout, mm -hmm. uh, the 305R maple mm -hmm. uh, shows a 9.9%, mm -hmm. and the 303-309, uh, 9.7. What is, where is that number derived from, the That's 1108? That's on a different lot. Is that on the That's, other lot? That's on the next application. On seven? Yeah, it was a little hard to see between the two, because we're looking yeah. at the existing process. Yeah. That's why I summarized it together. In the All right. Okay. Well, the house is an odd shape, I would say. Yep. So with that little cutout in the corner, um, like if you were driving to the driveway to, to the left, that little L-shaped area, if you squared that off, could you pull out the rest of the house from the 200 foot? I think the issue, it, it's... You're looking at four plans and living areas. The main, the main dwelling he is here. Your garage is there. You have a little breezeway coming in, but the areas are so tight. You know, you talk about a hallway, and then on the second level, a bedroom. You know, these bedrooms. If you go any smaller, the house, it's not really livable. It's not. Well, she doesn't mean smaller. She means to square like, up. See where that? There, we have like that L shape cut out down here. Nope. No, no. The here? Yeah. yeah. If you square here. that off, made it bigger in the front. Then you can pull out of the. Uh, like here, I'll the, show you. The, the garage, yeah, I see it. The garage is the minimum width. Like if you added this area. Like, and then... Take that. But that puts the garage into the living room. Mm -hmm. you got you to picture it this way. Scott. And it's all just a concept anyways, really. That's a concept, you're right. So your garage is effectively here. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So you can't you can't just square this off and put the garage here because now the garage is the front of the house. I'm not. Your living room. I wasn't really asking to move the garage. I was just saying extend. I wasn't saying to move the garage. Over. What? Leave the garage in the riverfront? Oh no, because it won't yeah. be. Okay, I see what no, you're saying. You can't do that. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it impacts the living yeah. area. Of the okay. House, yeah. so what did you say? It was the minimum width. What, did, what is the width of the garage? It's about 24 by 24. And we did a you know probably a single door. So it's, you know, again, I think you can make a narrower that's garage. Pretty, yeah. My garage is 22. Yeah. Well, two, two, two cars. My house was built in 1990. So you do have some leeway there. Yes, but again, this is a this is a floor plan that, that works. It's, we, it's a floor plan this. that works for making yeah. it attractive to sell. But we'll get, that's not necessarily what we're bound by. 9.9% .9 is like really mm. cutting it so. close. I feel like one little slip of the Yours bobcat. Yours is 22. Mm -hmm. And you guys get in there okay? Yeah. yeah. Not much room inside, but, but I had to do that for setbacks. But again, we, we the threshold, you know, it's set at 10%. Mm -hmm. It could have been set at, seven, it's set at 10, right? So effectively, yeah. the commission is taking 90% of the lot already in the riverfront area of that lot, right? So it's a 9 to 1 ratio to start and 100 foot no disturb to start. We're on the very outer edge. You know, it's, it's a pretty, it, it, it's, it's, it's favored to the environmental protection significantly already. We've, we've made concessions in other areas of this project, so. 
What are you suggesting that he make the garage a little smaller and take it a little further out of the riverfront? Yes. And you do that, you get you're pretty much out of the riverfront. Well, what about that? Well, are you? Also? Well, what do, uh, I mean, we're 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 compromising the livability of a, a, a again a 2020 constructed home and what the buyer is looking for today, and they're a different buyer than they were in 1990. Sorry, it's it's different, but we're talking about four or five feet here, and what 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 difference at that point does it make? We're, we're significantly compromising you know, the livability of the house. And five feet in a small house does make a big difference. You know, I live in a 1,500 square foot home on the, on the main living level, and I can't even imagine the wall being four feet, you know, further in. It does make a difference on the inside of the house. So what, what does that really do to benefit either way the rear front, where we put 100% of our effort into keeping the clearing, where there are mature trees, and you have your existing understory vegetation, and all those aspects of pipe this way as we could. <coughs> more than 150 feet away from the edge of the bank. Does that make sense? Mm. What's the total square footage in the riverfront? It's not that much, right? It what is, is it? It's a sliver. You know, it, it's 150 square feet, maybe. It's a sliver. <coughs> 150? No more, you think? I'm, I'm estimating. I don't, it's, it's an irregular shape, so. Yeah, you, you can figure that out with geometry. You mentioned the irregular <laughs> shape, too. That is a regular in shape because we're trying to get something that fits. You know, a, a, a regular size house is a really <coughs> customized footprint here. So we're, we're, we're actually going to actually do something that's not custom. It's not like a square box we're trying to build that would be easy to build. This will take a little more work to build something like this. So we're trying to get unique, we're trying to get creative and put something in that, that wasn't just a standard you know, 2,000 square foot footprint home. Yeah. What about putting the garage under? The grades don't work out. Okay. We've got a tremendous excavation. So this one we set, you know, we don't want the garage below the moon. And so we're, we're kind of coming up slightly here. So we can have a walk out here and not be having a lot of grading in this backyard. So we didn't want to, you know, be kind of caught below the yard and then sloping down. So we work with the grades. So you're coming in at a living level, and then you're walking out in the basement. So we set up with the basement walkout so we minimize the grading and disturbance in touching the soil. But those are really, it'd be really easy. So your, your time when you're doing the actual work on the lot is minimized. You're not moving a ton of earth to get this done. That's the closest point to limit work. No, 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 I'm sorry, 150 square feet. Yeah, that's just that's this, this the low point. Yeah. Just that little corner. What do you, what do you suggest stories, in there? Over three stories. Huh? Effectively, at that spot, that structure will be three stories tall, correct? You have a walk-up yeah. basement, yeah. a biddable, occupiable yeah. living space, the main living floor off the first, you know, that you'd enter in, and then that second story. We see too the, the arc of the river, that's the 100 foot setback to the inland bank. We see we're, we're measuring right at the closest point. So the river pulls away. Inside. The river comes into the corner of the property and then bends away. So this is just one little oxbow where it comes under the rail trail and turns. So that's what we're hitting. So it's not even, when I even talk about a linear, or you know, it's not like we're bordering we're 150 feet along a linear river paralleling it, the river comes and turns. Well, if the house was, can you go back to the picture? Yep. Hmm. Well, if the house was shifted that way, wouldn't it come out because of the bend? I'm on the zoning step back here. We took that in from the building envelope. You are. Oh yeah. So I guess my suggestion of squaring it off puts you over the yep. step back mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we tried to be creative and fit it into a very tight space, and we were just we were running out of running out of room.
Well, I, I do appreciate that it was pulled forward as much as you could and, and de you know, increase the distance from the resource. I, you know, I can see that you are trying to meet us halfway. So I do to, appreciate yeah, we're, that. We're trying to do the best we can to you know, give up 90% of the riverfront area on land. It's, it's quite a bit. So we're trying to make it fit and keep it. Yeah, it is close to the mark, but, you know, I think what we're, you know, we're talking about a slip of the bobcat or something, and this is staked out for the erosion control. And I think we need to take a look at, you know, where it is a tree, and we can look at adjusting that. Mm -hmm. you know, on that edge, and we, you know, I think we'd be okay with the condition to take a close look at this, and if we can preserve the tree here, we'll preserve it. Would that be fenced or staked in the future? I mean, if the, the homeowner wants the eventual occupant of that, how will they know that there's literally no additional square footage of all the mm -hmm. Can we put the markers up? You're required to anyways, on your standard conditions, so we put the markers right on that line. Well, there'd never be any more construction beyond the way right. you are well, now. Well, they'd have to come back to you. And, and I'm not worried about I'm more worried that just, you know, we're going to start breaking the leaves out from under those trees and we're going to start mowing it underneath. And the backyard gets a little bit bigger. Right. Oh, you mean, yeah, they got to expand it into a lawn? Or just by, I think, just, just by naturally time. living. Yeah. Yeah. 20 years from now, you know. Yeah. But having that permanent barrier, like Aaron mentioned, I think is it. What's going to be there? What will be there presently, you know, when this project, assuming it was done, what will be in the river front area? this way? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a nice wooded. It's, It'll just stay. It's nice wooded. There's very little um, is that 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 brush. And, you know, what we're proposing to the selectmen uh, at an upcoming meeting is allowing an access easement to get the public access out to Fox Campus Bay parcel. So, you know, again, I think it's it kind of it cleans up a lot. A, a, a lot public access there. for everybody, or just yep. people in the subdivision? Yep. No, it would give. No, it would be a public access easement. How would you access it if you the were road. on Maple Street? How would you get there? I'd have to drive up there. You go up the road, and you p could park there. Uh, it would follow. I don't think so. It was, if it was accepted publicly, yeah, it would follow this, the, the town's street parking policy. Assuming we built a compliant road, there'd be parking, at least at the outset, we'd allow parking on the roadway. I mean, again, obviously, we know funding there. Can you envision a half a dozen cars parked around that house, though? Come on. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, not in the foreseeable future. I get it. It's, just, it's about trying to just make sure that we have those rights today and making sure we have those rights tomorrow. I think accommodating um, if this subdivision, you know, when this comes to fruition, I think we're better off as a community with access off the cul-de-sac than we are where our rights are today if these homes get built. We're never going to build a roadway through somebody's front yard and through somebody's backyard. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's difficult to understand if we'll ever build the particular access that they're offering us just because we don't have the cash to do that sort of a project, but we certainly don't want to lose the right do the project. I think more likely would be some sort of pedestrian connection. These neighbors are going to want to get to the path. Yeah, that's what I think. It's going to be more for the neighbors. There, that's what you yeah. want. You're going to want to go out and check out College Pond. Mm -hmm. um, we tried through the special permit at the subdivision level um, to get that access. We had that access through the cluster that is not getting built. This is our next best option to get that access. Um, in the Oxbow is something that looks like, again, it would take uh, the permission of the Conservation Commission, but there is, a, it appears to me, it used to be some sort of access across the brook there. Yeah. I don't know if it's a sewer easement or something, but it's a, a, a little piece of yeah. thing, land that spits out, it's cleared, it, it, so we're trying to see if we can you know, find a way to get there. But that's, a, again, there's no active plan for that, but if we don't, have the right to get there. Yeah, right now, from the rail trail to Maple Street, the only way is going to go down to Nichols and come back up around this way. So this would provide a point if you could get across to your brook to get back out to Maple Street right here. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a bad walk, actually, in the whole loop, but this would provide a cut through. And that gets you up closer to the Forest Street here in the Bay Bay area. I, I, 
I hope I hope my message, you know, we've really tried to polish this and we've gone through great lengths, you know, you know, it's not it's not easy to, to compile all the different property owners over the time we've put into doing this and, and going through the efforts we've tried to go through to, to get this as minimized as possible. And I feel like we're we're at a really good spot right now where you know I think we're coming to the closure of the permitting process at least. Chelsea, before we, we move on, you, you had a question about a retaining wall? Just when we were talking about reducing like that 10% or that 9.9% .9 a little further, like that retaining wall, is that absolutely necessary? Is that going to get reduction or is that not counted? As it, wouldn't, it wouldn't affect the number, but that retaining wall is doing is minimizing the amount of fill. So it's going to reduce the amount of fill that's going to be put in the retaining wall. Whether it's your retaining wall, it's still it's still disturbed. Okay. Yeah. I guess well, the is, that's the footprint. We're not talking Altered. about a certain part of that footprint. It's yeah. the limit of work. Okay. Okay. How wide across is the lot? Um, like from the yeah, the the, here. yes, please. I didn't bring the line plan with me. Um, I believe this lot's about 120 feet. I think that was about the minimum we were holding for some of these lots. Okay. Which gives you enough, you know, you can see on the zoning setbacks. This one had the cul de sac coming in, that could affect the setback there. It would have been really nice to put a house back here where it was wider. That would have been an easy, yeah. easy alternative with a nice big, you know, four or 5,000 square foot house. But no, you aren't getting it. All right, and we, we have an understanding we will put in the order conditions that when a final building permit is applied for and uh, approved, you have to come back to us with your, your finished plans and we will vote then for the, the final order conditions. Right? So, you, well, you're going to issue an order conditions well, for this tonight. If we change this plan, they have to come back we to come around. back and we modify it. I think that's what we're talking about because we need to close, we need to take action on the hearing. So essentially what would have, would the commission could issue or the tonight and say they sell the lot, the homeowner wants to change it or something, there's circumstances where things have changed on site. Scott needs to come back and show us the site plan for those changes. And then we, if there is an area where something needs to be amended or changed or modified, that's where that discussion would happen in that meeting that's required for the order. Can we get that into one sentence in the yeah. conditions? <laughs> yeah. no, I'll make sure to pair that down. <laughs> Like I'm Vanessa sorry. said, that's just a concept right now, right? I mean, there was some thought put into the floor plan. Mm. We don't have full building drawings yeah. uh, for it, but there was some thought put into I it. mean, they're extremely limited in what they want to yeah. do. In that, with the setbacks that you outlined in the yellow, they don't have, I mean, that's probably about what they're going to end up with because there's not really many other options. Yeah. So we're, even, we're utilizing the section of the zoning plus the portion of the stairs in the front of the setback. Do you have any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. No more questions. Sure. Again, Bill Ratch, Street Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. And forgive me for asking this question this far into the project. I can spend someone else's money as easily or a lot easier than I can spend my own. Had the person who's designed or asked for this project purchase one of the lots that fronts on Maple Street and goes down to near the river for a roadway and or would it have made it easier for these lots closer to the water? Would it have made it, made it easier for them to be developed? I, uh, you have I so many. I understand what you're talking about. Uh, I think you're talking about another, uh, looking at other adjacent. Rather than, say, coming in Nickel Street, say if you came in on a roadway, for a street from Maple Street, by purchasing one of the lots that you're talking about that fronts on Maple Street, so, if you'd purchased one of them, however yeah, wide so it be. I think, I think I can answer that. Um, we have looked at that option. Yes, we thought there was an easier way to do this. We looked at every other way, and we did look at that, actually. Um, Didn't they develop a bylaw? We, we looked at this lot here, uh, which we did, 
But the issue here is you've got no sight distance. So you cannot put a safe driveway or a roadway curb cut there that's right on the, on the armpit of the 362 curb. Right. Okay. It wasn't safe. We, we approached owners in Fox Run to see if we could come out this way. I mean, we, we talked to every property owner in the state neighborhood to see, you know, if we could do something different. Keep in mind, too, all the residents living here, they're staying there. They're their homes. This is really, you know, they're not going anywhere. They want to stay there. There's a lot of work going on on those houses, so I think that they are not selling. They're, sorry, um, that they're putting work in to stay is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, so we, we, did, we did explore all those options. Thank you. Anyone else? Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matthew Duggan, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. So this is a uh, complicated project. Um, a lot of uh, measurements to take into account. Um, what I've heard tonight were the calculations were done for the 200-foot riverfront area. I know you uh, had examined the roadway previously for this project and you knew that there was vegetated wetlands that were impacted uh, by the roadway and the retaining wall. Does those, are there also vegetated wetlands that are related to these, uh, these lots? I don't know, this is specific to um, lot number six, but I like, guess it's more of a general question for seven and eight as well. So are there other lines of demarcation that come into play here? for uh, setback requirements or um, like do not disturb areas, that kind of thing, besides just the 200 foot riverfront area? This is a 25 and 35, but it's, it's not on, impacted, it's is it? It's on lot eight, on lot eight it comes yeah, into I play. Yeah, I know lot eight mm -hmm. is probably the one that's most contentious. So can I ask, has the commission actually done a site visit to this property? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and a limited site visit. When, and when, what time of year was it? Uh, uh, September. September. So I've, I've had a, a town meeting member who grew up in that area, and he tells me that as a child he played in the woods there with his friends and said that there was uh, a considerable amount of time during the year where there was uh, surface water or vernal pools or whatever you want to call them. So I think the state regulations say that if it's, upwards of five months out of the year, which probably would encompass like late winter and springtime. So has that been considered uh, as part of this uh, application? That there could be other, um, not, not vegetated wetlands, but- Resource areas? Yeah, areas that would come into play in terms of, uh, um, of, uh, wetness. So it's just a question. So if you haven't, it, it was considered for the roadway. Um, when I'm looking at this map, I'm I'm thinking that lot seven might have some. Yeah. All the vernal pools that are known of should be mapped by the mm -hmm. state. And it's been so long since I looked at the full NOI that I can't really remember if you addressed that or not in it. Yeah, we we examined everything uh, with the roadway application. And we our site walk and in the whole line going around. Uh, there seems to be a lot of public misperception on what this delineation is and where it is. And it doesn't show on this plan because we're so far away. Again, the only thing in this lot we're talking about is the outside edge of the riverfront area. That's the only thing we're looking at under here. There is an area that floods um, and it comes up and we walk that and you see the grade comes up a couple of feet and then it levels out. The wetland line is actually 20 to 30 feet further in from what you would perceive as, you know, a woodland forest bed. And we walked that, we checked when we checked the soils with Rich Kirby, the Roman scientist. Um, there's no evidence of flooding, there's no evidence, uh, you know, you don't see the stained leaves in the ground, you don't see it, you know, and I've been out there at all times of the year. I truly believe that yes, there are areas that dry up as they go out of the wetland and they flood in the springtime and you can't walk through there. And it's a pretty distinct line, but that's from the line that we show in other other parts of the, the subdivision that's much further up from the delineation. So, um, and the, that line is memorialized right now. Um, All right, just uh, one last question for this specific agenda item. So we, 
I heard mention of the retaining wall, and it sounded like that was a considerable height, right? More more than six or seven feet. This was at the rear of the property for the. Does which, it which uh, retaining wall? It's for lot eight. For this lot six, there was a retaining wall. I heard. I thought I heard someone mention. About a six foot. It's about a six foot. Yeah, and is that for the rear of the lawn? Like it separates the lawn from the Do you want to come forest? up and you can see it on this plan. It's, it's almost there. like a, it's a backyard, not like a it's to aesthetic you just point it out, Scott? So it's just coming off the back of the house to retain the, the garage comes in at the existing grade and the grade drops down so it's lower as the backyard. So all this is doing is retaining the earth in the front yard so we can have a level lot in the backyard and minimize a lot of earthwork. Mm -hmm. What's the height of the wall? It's about six feet. Okay. But it'll slope down six feet. So I ask about the wall because um, if there is surface water there, it's typically either from uh, you know snow melt or rainfall, and that I think uh, would naturally flow um, down the slope into that river area. So would the retaining wall may interfere with that flow or? Is that something that's more applicable to that roadway retaining wall at <coughs> lot number eight? Maybe we'll just, I'll, I'll reserve that question until we get to that item. But I think um, there's some complications here, especially with the numbers. I think someone, somebody should verify the calculations because as you mentioned, you're right on that, the cusp of that 10% and very easy to kind of uh, cross over that. Thank you. Is this something we could submit for peer review? Commission has always had that had its option. Um. Could I, Scott? What are the odds that the numbers on this lot or any of the lots that we're talking about will be reviewed if a 401 quality when you if or you do that application? We're not doing a 401 quality. We're going to put a deed restriction. Okay, and has that? Anymore, and do we know? Is that confirmed? Oh yeah. From the D oh, okay, and we haven't heard otherwise. Full on water quality for subdivisions. No one does that. I don't know. But for some reason, DPP comments that way, and it seems like you have to do it. But you okay. just put a deed restriction on the property, and that's how they limit it. The the idea is that they they want to limit any further alteration yeah, in the future. Yeah. In the future. So that goes they, in the title. If they have asked for a 401. They always the they day. always write that comment that way, and I don't know why, but they never bring up the fact that you can just file a deed restriction in. Uh, and they, do they have to approve that though? No, no Pam Merrill sent the actual form that they yeah. they just updated it. So yeah, in that email to you. Yeah, for copy on it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, okay. we'll be doing that, that, that deed restriction. And as far as the areas go, uh, you know, it's all done very precisely the, you know, with AutoCAD and the digital drafting tools that we use to, to measure these areas. It's all very precise. That same digital file is what goes into the survey instrumentation and is staked out mm. and very precise. Um, it's it's kind of a blessing and a curse because when you did it by hand back in the day, there was always like you couldn't measure it as, as precise as you could. So you had you raised the question about peer review. And for what what would be what was the purpose? Well, there's two. There's we're just calculations that we were just discussing, and then the actual uh, boundaries of the wetlands. And I, th I know in this particular lot, wetlands don't come into the equation. But I, I'm not sure about lot seven, definitely lot eight. The wetlands have already been memorialized with the order of conditions for the road. We reviewed all of that in that mm. order, so there's nothing there to review. For the road? But what about lot eight? Because we, there's, there's, some wet, there's some wetlands replication, so same, everything's kind well, of we're about, dynamic. Yes, we're talking about lot six, but that all that work with the road, that that's behind us, and that memorialized the wetland line. There's no more question mm. about the weather line. The, with respect to peer review, you know, I just sat here and watched several hearings ahead of us not be asked to do peer review. And I've never seen that before, and I just I feel that's that's kind of unfair to put that burden, you know, which seems kind of random on this application. I think we put together a lot of effort to try to minimize impacts here. We're asking to use 10% of the riverfront area and 90% of its preserve for outside of 150 feet, 156 feet away, which is very, very nibbling with any, any potential impervious area. No driveway in the riverfront. 
I think we've you know, we've gone through a lot of due diligence on this, and we've made further adjustments. Um, with some of the comments from Member Curran further pull that out, and it's tight, tight, tight. So I, I respectfully, you know, I really think we've put together a really solid effort here. And you know, again, due diligence will have a you have conditions in your permit. We'll be doing a pre-construction site walk. Any of you are more than welcome to come to that um, if you wanted to go through it and look at it in the field and see how that looks. Happy to meet you. Okay, that said, um, we have any other questions? Anything else from the audience? Okay. I would say I'll make a motion that we, uh, we grant them a issue a order for conditions for this lot six. Okay, I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions. Um, with the condition, just calling it out, I know it's beating a dead horse, but that when the building permit um, is applied for, any changes must come back before us as well, and also the to put the conservation markers along the back of the property. And can we add about the deed restriction? That's, I think, That'll separate, right? right? It, it, yeah, it, it's, I think it's, you can reference the DEP comment. We're, we're gonna do the deed restriction. No, no. Okay. Reference it. All right, for uh, 305 R Maple Street, lot 6, DEP file number 14-1332. I'll talk in the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's getting late. Do we want to continue or do we want to move on to January? Uh, we, it's we up like to you. Tonight, yeah. Can we take like a five minute break? <laughs> yes, that's a, a good idea. Mm -hmm.
Sorry. You all set? Yeah, he's all set. Okay, so now we're on to item number, item letter G. Is that correct? Um, public hearing for 303 to 309, 305R, 313R, Maple Street, Lot 7, DEP file number 14 1333. Uh, who's here for the applicant? My name is Scott Kemp, I'm on the phone group, this is Elm Street Danvers, on behalf of the people of Woods LLC. Um, uh, this is uh, the, uh, we just talked about lot six, this is the next lot over, lot seven. Uh, very similar applications, uh, again, we were talking only about uh, work within the riverfront area. this lot, there's no work within the weapons buffer zones proposed herein. Uh, and again, I would refer back to the letter uh, I handed you on the prior application. Um, talking about uh, the alternatives and responding to the DEP comments, uh, which was uh, identical on this lot as it was on lot six. Um, for the sake of time, um, would you like me to go through that again for this lot? Mm. Other than the numbers, uh, I, will, I will go over with you, but as far as the other items we, we just talked about. I don't think you need to I go into the numbers, detail. Sure. Okay. Um, so this particular lot, um, you did, again, uh, receive some comments uh, from uh, Member Kirk, and we tried to work those comments in. Um, so what we did do is, uh, one of the comments was to go from a square deck to a rectangular deck, so we did, we did make that change, um, pull the deck uh, structure out, so it, it would just be kind of the edge of the overhang of the deck into the riverfront, and then we pulled the patio in. Uh, the other thing that I added was, again, the building envelope. So this house uh, was already pulled all the way up to the front building envelope, which I highlighted in yellow. And then on our own, we, we also uh, pulled, um, I can show you, the, the limited clearing was more rectangular before, uh, but I did soften that and pull it further away from the 100-foot buffer here, uh, which is the wetland buffer. Uh, and in doing so, we, we again we paid attention to that 150 number on the riverfront step back, we're up 164 feet to the closest point to the river on this lot. So the only work we're proposing in the river front area is the patio and the, and the yard area, which again is a modest 35 feet on the back of the house. And you can see we fit this one. Uh, this was a more regular shaped footprint, so we did fit a, a very generic square box into that footprint. Do you have the old version that yep. you can put side by side yep. like you did for the other one? Thanks. Put these side this side. So, you can see that. so pretty much the only change is the the patio and the we pulled deck. The house we, footprint we, we, didn't move. We, we pulled the riverfront in here, yeah. and we pulled the deck in here and made it longer and more rectangular, and we pulled the patio in here and made that tighter. So what do you mean you pulled the riverfront in? I didn't touch the riverfront. I no. moved all the work closer to yeah. the edge of it, so we're yeah. just, just kissing the edge of it, and there's no building structure in it. And it's in this one, we have a little more room pull it out, there's a five, five foot buffer so the riverfront. Is the patio mm -hmm. poured, a poured, what is the patio? We can do it how, if you prefer a previous paver patio, we, we can do a paver type of patio, that would probably be my preference. I prefer it. And mm -hmm. why does it? And what did the, did the distance change at all? It's 164 it, now, what was it? It was uh, 167, but we, we pulled, we, we pulled this further away here, and we pulled this further away here, so you can see, where we, where we, we pull the corners in. What does that mean? So then how is you. it less, how is it, it was further and now it's not it's as three far. Feet. It's, it's, the measurement was to this corner which we yeah. lifted out and we, we softened that. So, so essentially he oh, so you're going to a different point. Kind of point. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Just to pull it, pull it, more, make it more uniform and regular to the back. So are you house. saying you changed the lot size? Nope, I changed the limit of work. Pull that out. <coughs> Do you demarcate that border in any way with, with stakes or yep, something? Yeah, it would be the same thing. We would stake that out. Okay. So the backyard has changed. Yes. The shape of the backyard yep. went from this to this. It was, it so was, now more riverfront on the side is preserved. That, yeah, that's a good explanation. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how much, but. Yeah. With regards so to the areas, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, whatever. So you pulled the yard back. Right. And these yards are going to be delineated by, I know we talked about this in the last slide. Instrument stakeout, so survey instrument stakeout, so it's very precise. No, no, but 
for the homeowner, just so he's not encroaching towards with, the river. With conservation markers and put the, the <coughs> marker in front of the marker, so we'll say conservation zone, you know, I, I can't remember what they say, but it, yeah. they have a set of standard markers that they go as fast as possible. So on this one here, this is just the overall locust map. Uh, this was actually a, a one acre lot, which is why it's an irregular <coughs> shape. But this is on 305 rear in the purple, and 303 to 309. This was 1915, 1923. So this one had a little bit of work on 303 to 309, and a little bit of work on 305R. That makes up the difference in the letter in that table I gave you. That letter, that last section. Yeah. The, that other. Identified here. The 1108? Mm hmm. And that's on 303 to 309. Which is this section here. And then the rest of it is on 305R, which is that section there. Why? What was the motivation to make this uh, this U shaped lot? To make it more regular to the back of the house. We were trying to just figure out ways to pull it, you know, and balance it and make it more uniform to the back. And before we had. No, no, no. I'm talking about the lot. The shape of the, the lot. lot that that the zoning says if, you're, if you have two times the lot area, you don't have to do a lot regularity calculation. So we just made it twice the area with excess land. Is that going to open up any, any kind of problems with, with lot eight? Is, is he's surrounded by lot seven now. But yes. This is all wetland. No, that's not out. That's yeah, right. You're right. It's not up to us. I'm just my mm. curiosity. Mm. It's the weirdest looking lot I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so again, all the work is located here. We're 164 feet from the nearest point of the river. And why does the patio have to go there? We're trying to keep it tight. Honestly, it would be better if it came off the deck. You know, so it's more linear from out there, but we're keeping it close to the back of the house as we can, so you know it's not gonna get too far. So we're we're focused on, you know, this one we were trying to keep the lawn more uniform shape in relation to the patio. What's what do you envision beyond the patio? Lawn, lawn and seed. Just in the, just in the green area, though. Yeah. Correct. And what's the distance uh, on that from the back of the house to the back of the limit of work? Yeah. So we held 35 feet, and then the house is another about five feet away, so about 40 feet. So this one, the house is, is a good ways out of the riverfront. So this line here. That's the 100 foot line from the, the wetlands? That's correct. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Yes. Which line is that? It says limit of 100 foot buffer to PDW. Oh, yeah. yeah. So is that little corner that's in it, it's a little triangle? That's, this here? Um, no, down to towards the street. So there's a little corner. Sorry, here. <laughs> This part right here, this little triangle. Yep. So this is within the hundred foot buffer, and is that just going to be long? That would just be long. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Okay. And the, the garage, is it underneath? This one would just be a front entry garage. You're not. And all that, the, the driveway and the house is outside. Right, and this is a much bigger that. house, too. Isn't it? it is a bigger house, yeah. But, but on this one, the garage is, you know, the, it's the part of level that. is half garage, yeah. right? So it's a, it's a different, different mm -hmm. layout. Hmm. Can I use, do you have silk fence? Yeah, there will be silk fence details in the plan. At the, at the 100 foot limit? No, at the limit of work. We're not going anywhere near the 100 foot. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. This is the yeah. sill fence here at the limit of the yard? Yeah, that's where they'll okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I see. I decided I'm here. It's fitting the fence for you, so that's where it's. Okay, my sorry. My bad. And this, this arc line, that's the. 
the riverfront? That's limit? the riverfront. Okay. Yep. Okay. So what's the relation between the lawn and the riverfront as far as how much lawn could they have? No more than. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, can this, only alter that's this number, 1,100 feet. That yeah. 1,100. That's so what that. <clears throat> so the 1,100 is everything that, within what you say you pulled in, to get to the 10 percent below the 10 percent. The besides the lawn encroaching into the riverfront, but also the patio encroaches into the riverfront. So in a sense, it's almost like do you double it in a way. I mean, you could almost say, wait, I'm going to add the, I got to add that twice. I got to add the lawn that encroaches, and now I got to add the patio on top of that. It's just alteration. It's just the footprint. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, if we're proposing the house further back up in here, we would be talking about that. Can we pull the house out? And that's where you know, we're looking at it. I, I just, again, I, I cut right to the chase. We're, we're trying to do everything we can to pull, pull the work out and, and, and do the best we can to you know, minimize impacts. Now, is this going to be a walkout from the basement? This one's at grade, yeah. This, this lot worked out is pretty much at grade. So there would be but a But it's going to be a walkout onto the patio, and then the deck yeah, is going to be a walkout. The, from the living, uh, living level, you walk out. So this what level is the deck on? The deck would be on the first floor. First so floor? This, this would have a, a full basement. It would not have a walkout on this one. The topography doesn't work out on this lot. It's level. It's and the like patio is not off the basement, like a finished yeah. basement or anything. It's right. it's off yeah. the first floor it's also. First floor. So steps down from the it deck. Was, yep. So the patio and the deck at the same level with each other? Well, yeah. no, the deck would be on the first floor. Your patio would be a couple feet below that. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you could come out and then maybe walk down the stairs. From yeah. The deck okay, I see that. Okay. Okay. I mean, this one's fairly straightforward, I think. Yeah. Um, Anyone have any other questions? Well, I think if it's less alteration than the other one, then mm. there we have it. Yeah, the, I, I think so too. Mike, yeah, you all yeah. Set? I'm all set. I'll, Chelsea, yeah, I'm all set. I'll make a motion. Public? We issue. Uh, an, oh wait, oh. sorry, we have public. I'm sorry. I, I would get to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you did miss one. No. <laughs> it was just one. I've learned from my mistakes. Everyone missed one. No, I missed one. Uh, you all said? <laughs> yes. Anyone from the public? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matthew Duggan, Town Meeting Member, Precinct One. I had a question about the area between the limit of work and uh, Beaver Brook. What, what happens to that land? Like, who owns that and who manages it and who protects it? So that yeah. would, it would be owned by the homeowner, and it would remain anything past the markers that will be placed would hopefully stay undisturbed in exactly how it is now. So the, the owner would own from the street, the house, and then all the way down to the water. Yeah. That would be like a rectangular, similar to what's there today, the rectangular shape lots. Not what, no, the lot that's on this plan is what the owner will own. Did you see that lot, Matthew? Come up and look. It's, it's an that interesting lot. Seven, right? Yes. Yeah. You see that? You see the, the drawing? And the lot is kind of seven shaped. Right. So when it cur curves around, right? It, 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 it encompasses eight. Yeah. It's not encompassing. It's well, around, it's it around. surrounds eight. Eight yeah. and one butter. So this, this <laughs> lot is the biggest <laughs> lot of them all, right? Of the eight? I would lot. think so. Is that true? There's another one. Uh, it's the second biggest. Uh, lot 5, which we won't oh, be looking yeah. at because we're outside of the mm. front on that, is the biggest. That also wraps around. But they're, they're, they're over an acre, these lots. Yeah. But mo you know, most of that's wetland or protected area. So does the horseshoe cross over 321R, this uh, lot 7? No. It butts up against it. it Where's the twenty one R? Oh, the that's the the parcel with. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's right at the pop property line. That's that's two twenty one. And just one last thing. So how, how, 
How would the uh, just a casual observer know where the property line is here if they were to go back there? Because it's right now it's just woods, right? It's just I assume that it will be kept that riverfront area will be kept similar to what it is today with kind of a, it's kind of a forest kind of a yeah. landscape. That those trees and everything back there will remain the way it is today? Uh, does the subdivision re rules require any sort of monumentation? Iron pipes at the right of way on the lot lines, right. and then there's still monuments at the right of way changes. I would imagine you're not going to require any of the monumentation in the car. That wouldn't be but, No. But I think the front end will likely be monumented because of the subdivision. Typically what we see just in the industry is at some point somebody will want to put up a fence and we'll say, well, in this case, you're going to see Georgia at the con mm -hmm. and talk to her first, and then they'll say, well, we need you to stake out my lawn. That'd be a lot of fence. In this case, they're, they're going to have their conservation markers here to know where their limit is, and then they'll Practically speaking, behind lot eight, uh, there's not going to be any lawn or anything back there. I mean, it's as if there's nothing back there. No. It just, it just gave them the necessary area, like you said, to double the zoning to get out, to allow this irregular shaped lot. Yeah, and I just ask about that because there was, there's a similar situation um, over next to the rail trail by uh, Toomey Street where there's this kind of a, that is actually a crescent shaped piece of conservation land that was required. The developer kind of set that aside and now that was quite a few years ago, but now when you go there, the people that abut that, they don't know what the history of it is. And that's kind of the, you know, today it's clearly defined uh, on, the, on the paper, but you know, 20 years down the road when we're all gone, it's not so clearly understood, and I assume people could pull the pull the deed or whatever and just determine it then. But okay, right. thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Can I get? Okay. Uh, All right. And, uh, just one thing: when we do make a motion, we have to do the same thing with coming back to us with any alterations. In the building for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's going to add that. And also about the um, markers. The, the, the deed markers. restriction. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, I make a motion that we issue an order of conditions for 303 uh, 309, 305R, 313R Maple Street being lot number 7, DEP file number 14 1333 with the condition that the applicant come back with any changes and the further condition that it contain the deed restriction as to the riverfront area, mm -hmm. All right? Motion's been made, is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two down. All right, where is the other one? The other one looks <laughs> tough. You know, oh. but I lost my plan. Is, uh, is there a second? Of intent for 303 309, yeah. comma 313 Maple Street, also known as Lot 8, DEP file number 14 1331. Who's here for the applicant? Uh, the wall right up uh, kissing that line 
Um, and we had done it based on the existing 25 foot. Um, as cushions were, we are adding a uh, replication area for the rubber area. And then once that's done, theoretically, the 25 foot would be pushed out. The replication is filed. So, in consideration to that, what we did is we offset the 25 foot buffer and the 35, and we designed and made some adjustments to stay outside of that, that 25. So, what we did is we pulled the wall two feet off the 25 foot buffer all the way down in parallel with it. It actually the buffer kills away, so you have closer to three feet on this end, but no closer than two feet here. So it doesn't sit on the buffer it's anymore. Not on, so there's enough room to put in silt fence and enough room to get the teeth of an uh, excavator in to put in your, your base of the wall and build the wall without getting into the 25. Um, we did add in, although this isn't designed, we'll be able to do that until we get out next spring and, and take a look at the vegetation, but we're anticipating doing the rest of the replication area that was required under the road permit here. Again, we're not reviewing that on this plan, but this is where we are right now. And when the project starts next spring, we'll be able to take a closer look at that for the roadway order of conditions. Uh, but we did hold that. Um, and again, the 25 foot is that area. Uh, I think we get up to around 2.8. The one ratio it's it's more than what the commission asked for um, we added uh, there was some question about fence protection on this so we did add a fence and we showed that uh, guardrail on top of the wall and then we softened the slope here it was a one-to-one -one. we soft, softened that to a two-to-one uh, just to make it a little you know it'd be a little easier to stabilize and easier to walk down in here that anybody get down for maintenance or just to enjoy the the, the path that comes back out down to the river this way um, which kind of runs through the wetland this way, that's the path we walk. Existing so path. Existing path. Yeah. Um, so we made those changes to the plan. Again, this one does not have any work in the riverfront. This will all be staked out, engine and survey. Uh, we're not asking for any waivers. We comply with uh, the Danvers Buttons bylaw. Uh, and um, I think that, that's the gist of what I have for you tonight. So to clarify, 25 and 35, as shown on this plan, are for the existing wetlands, the current wetlands. We proposed. So what we did is we adjusted it. Do you have the old one? Or is there a change yeah, to it? I did. I did okay. put that. Yes. Sorry, I did. That's yeah, helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I just kind of so we can put the next one another. That's right up. So you can see the 25 was here before following the existing wetland, and we bumped that out. It's not through here anymore up here mm -hmm. we bump that out to follow this replication area what did you bump out the 25 foot setback so we're measuring it to the future wetland so with the if the wet, well, wetland what? were to replicate the way that they're showing the new 25. so you've changed the way you replicate no, no he's no. changed the buffer instead the of the original buffer you can see it here see this based, line based on what he's that's 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 where it is today yeah so that's what we should be measuring to right that's that's yeah. existing wetland 25 35 100. Yeah. What we did is we said, all right, well, we're gonna we're gonna push the wetland out here when we replicate. You know, this is that area that was all those small pine trees that we had. You're gonna find. add wetland. And we're gonna create the wetland here. Yeah. And the condition on the roadway was to increase it from two to one to two and a half. To yeah, one. I remember. I asked right? for that. So what we've added, we've actually added area to get this closer to three to one oh, in this area. Yeah, said that. And then I offset from that line 25 feet to a new, this would be a okay. theoretical 25-foot setback. Can yeah. you see it? Yes, I can see it. Oh, sorry. Um, so we're, I've we're got it here, too. Yeah. So you were originally going to do two. I asked for two and a half, and you're doing three. It, it, it will of course, probably be three, closer to three. Like 2.81. Yeah. Again, yeah. with this process, we get out in the uh, field, and we're going to just spit that and try to preserve trees, and it's something we do to minimize impact. Uh, and this is the area we've identified in here. What's the probability that line could be closer? Um, closer I know, to like, you know, I know you say we can't tell until vegetation's in, things have been established, but based on your... I, I say it's three. It's closer to 3-1 because we've added additional buffer in case we do need to make an okay. adjustment. I don't have okay. to go closer. Great, thanks. So, we, we <laughs> so by building, in, uh, building it in closer to 3, you have a little have bit a little to bit play more. with to bit make bit sure more. you don't... In, encroach on the 25. Yeah, or, or and make sure we can meet the, the no. condition on the All right. most importantly. So I, I just added some All right. I have no more questions on this. Yeah. What's the length of the retaining wall? 
one night my scale is at another meeting. Uh, so this is a, a 40 scale drawing. So approximately 40, 80, about 110, 115 feet. Okay. And then how wide is it going to be? So this wall, the base blocks in this end will probably be about four feet deep, so about that deep on the base, and then the top blocks are only about 18 inches deep, so it's a gravity wall. So as you can imagine, the bigger blocks need to hold more weight, so they're bigger, that's your, your base, and it comes up. At the top, you'd only see about 18 inches, so what you would see in the top of this, in fact, you probably would only see a sliver, because that top block is actually designed so you grade, you grade over it. It's shaped, um, uh, So the top wall block has a lip on it, and it's shaped like this. Mm -hmm. And you fill over this so you can plant seed. Mm -hmm. So from the top, all you see is that. And then they pre-drill fence posts into that block, and that's where you sit in the fence. So it would be like a cross section to the wall. And then your next block below that would be here. You can picture that cross section. Mm -hmm. So the fence appears <coughs> to sit in the, in the grass? The fence is actually, it's cored right into the wall block. They but it looks they, like it's cored it looks like grass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah, they pre drilled So it'll look like grass. Oh. Yeah. And what's the height of the wall? At the high end, if you're about six feet on this end, and it tapers down to just one course of block at the end. But it slopes down. You can see the contour. We are at, Marcus, uh, We start at 65 here. Hmm? And we're 64, yeah, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65 60, 58. Yeah. So it's sloping down. So, do you need a building permit for this wall? Where it gets over four feet, you need a building permit. Okay. You don't need a structural engineer until you get over 10 feet. Okay. So, if we need a building permit, and I'm just asking this question, mm -hmm. uh, is that, how does that go with the no build limitation? The no build, you know, again, I've, we've been doing these, I can, I can think of three or four of them in the last couple of years where we've done walls. That has always been held, in my experience, to buildings, so structures, habitable space. And the idea there is to keep the house from sitting right next to the wetland on that 25, so you're pushing that further off. We've, we've done walls consistently for a long time. And that's never, that the, and they've been always in the 20, you know, between 25 and 35. Well, I've heard of fences, but walls still? Yeah. Yep, there's two on Ripple Hill. Original permits on the Holly Hill lots were all all walls. We changed that to a that slope right? after the fact. Yeah. We had walls around the 25. Was it walls over there? Yep. The original permits the whole were thing. walls. And then we came back and we modified it to a one-to-one -one slope. If you remember, we went through the whole modification process and we did the vegetated slope on that one. But the initial approval was a wall. So we're saying you don't need a variance for a wall. You don't need a weight? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what, yeah. Or that's, that's the precedent the commission set in the past, but it's mm -hmm. the definition is interpretable mm -hmm. by the commission. Yeah. Could we get an opinion on it? I mean, I don't want to hold this up tonight. But for the future. But when when these guys come back. Yeah. An and opinion I think on down the line, clarifying. Yeah, you know, wall versus fence. Or updating right. those regulations. Yeah. Fence really. doesn't do much good there, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the regulation or our bylaw is a bit vague. Mm -hmm. It's definitely open to interpretation. Yep. Right. As but but I mean, he's right. I mean, we have permitted them in other areas, so we just yeah. Gotta, I, yeah. I think in the future we want to uh, have a better idea of just what that all is. Mm -hmm. but I think that you know you said that you consider it to be a structure that people can be in, but it does name by name. Porches, decks, additions, and sheds. So, I mean, an addition, yes, that's, you know, somebody's in there. But I think in there it also said, but not, but not Sorry. limited to. It doesn't say, it doesn't specify it. The one commonality with all those, they're all attached to a building or they are a separate accessory building. But a shed isn't, it's an accessory. It's an accessory, but it's also with a, it's a foundation with a structure above it for habitation or it's attached to the structure mm. for habitation. Mm. That's how I've always, uh, that's, I've always done it here. Okay. Um, now you are going to know the exact boundaries of your replication area before you have a building permit for this lot. Is that right? That's part of the roadway order. Um, and I, I don't recall from memory the sequence. Uh, I will be recommending uh, Colin Tony to do that first. And I'd like to get out 
right away and get that work going. Because um, it does start a clock on, then we have to get a couple growing seasons, mm -hmm. seasons in to make sure it's done. So again, that's another one where there's a pre-construction site walk. Um, I, you know, I, for any of you who come out in Georgia, we can have to do that and we can talk about it. Um, so we'll see how it's done in the field. Yeah, then you'll have definitive answers as to where all your setbacks here. If you couldn't do a waltz, what would you do? <laughs> we, could, we would slope it. You know, we slope down. Yeah. Would it be as ideal? I think. Mm. I feel the um, with regards to the replication, we are. This would be staked out for us. We would stake it, so we know. All right, here's our plan where we drew it, and then we're going to figure out how that's going to be done when we get out there and we look at the states. And that's where we you know, meet with Georgia and we, we go through that. We look at the soils, the water table. Yeah. Plants are going in, what we're going to backfill the material yeah. with. Well, other towns have. Back. Georgia, other towns have no build, no disturb. Um, how do they treat walls? I wonder. I'd have to look. Uh, not no, every wonder. town does. Yeah. Um, My town in Lexington, we would allow a wall. You did? In between the 25. And we happen to have You, you have. I was just curious. Yeah. Not, not every town has the same thing as this. Right, right. Yeah. We would allow walls. Well, I think this I is. Before. I, the only thing I think about the wall versus fence is. Slopes are hard to hit in the field, and most development, it seems, you know, it's pretty hard to hit some of these slopes. But think about Holly Hill, um, sorry, not Holly Hill, uh, Robin Hill Road, Whipple Hill. A lot of these folks are, you know, we can get him to say whatever about slope. Yeah. And then the homeowner will be in here the first year. So yeah, I want to have I a wall. I need a backyard, I need to yeah. fill this in, and I don't think the commission has said no very often to that. I mean, I, you're just thinking of all, tonight we did a closeout on um, Robin Hill Road, where yeah. basically it was, you know, we did a slope and did the wetland, and then the next thing you know, we're actually letting them yeah. ramp well, up. And we need and, to do less of that. So, I mean, I think this is a more okay. likely outcome. I think it's a better for the protection for the wetlands. Yeah. Wall. Okay. Well, so this is the only lot in this area where within the, the 100 foot jurisdiction, right? Okay, because we will we'll want to stress the, the no fertilizer. Because, I mean, this, this is a pristine wetlands over there. I, we, we have to do whatever we can to protect that. I believe that's a mm -hmm. perpetual condition that carries forward traditionally. Right. I think it's, it's, it's not adhered to, I don't mm -hmm. think, for that. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere down the road we have to move in that direction to enforce that a little bit better. Yeah. No uh, questions? Is I there any more, more questions, questions uh, from the board? I have a few more. So go ahead. Sorry, guys, I know it's getting late. Don't apologize. Um, so just out of curiosity, so this little triangular area here mm -hmm. belongs... Lot seven. Right. Did you guys ever consider squaring this off a little more and then moving the driveway over to this side? It's a, it, again, it's a zoning thing. Okay. It's a zoning, you know, it's a script and it, it's very inflexible. So we, we design it to be, you know, we're, we're balancing all these regulations, we're trying to protect 25, we're trying, you know, and it's, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of overlapping regulations that we, we have to navigate through. So that is a function of zoning. One way that I see in other towns that uh, you get around that situation is on cul-de-sacs, you allow for a shorter frontage. Mm -hmm. And that allows, you know, because where you lose it is on, you're still trying to provide 120 feet on a cul-de-sac arc, and you end up with this really weird, you know, concave frontage. Well, what's it matter if you just make that come radially off the cul-de-sac? But it's not, you know, again, it's not a damper zoning, it's, it's things mm -hmm. that we see in other communities. Is the drywall on this one? I didn't think you could infiltrate within 50 feet, and I, are you it's inside 50 feet on the on the what you ex, where you expect the wetland line to be? We we are well. We have the drywall here. Frankly, we can put this anywhere. Right. Um, but we did. I, I believe I believe it's 25 on 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 drywalls for roof. Um, so we do have it here. I guess we we're trying to bring water back down to point where it would go back into the water supply. And this is, you know, from getting the roofs, we wanted it on the low side of the block, not the, not the higher side over here. What was your concern, Aaron? I didn't 
think you were allowed to infiltrate within 50 feet of the resource area. But I'm not the expert. I bet it is. And you think it's 25? So this one would be clean roof runoff. Hmm? This would be, this drywall is only for clean roof runoff. We're concerned about when they're, when they're picking up roadway runoff, yep. which has. You call roof runoff clean runoff. I know you do. Yeah. yeah. And the driveway is going out to a catch basin? The driveway, we, all the lots of greatest of the driveways go out to the street drainage, okay. which go through the, the, the street treatment system, yeah. which is much more robust. You have catch basins, deep sets, yeah. hoods, you have the pre-treatment filters. So. so in terms of constructing the wall, mm -hmm. can you just walk us through the type of machinery that's used in like the how much disturbance you think is going to occur from constructing the wall? Yep. Um, these modular walls are very, very easy to install. So we stick out the silt fence first. The silt fence is going to go in to establish a limit of work. What's going to happen is the machine is going to sit. It's going to it's going to start running tracks parallel with the wall, and they'll turn and they'll they'll scrape right, you know, probably six six inches in front of the toe of the wall, and they'll scrape out. In a, in a linear fashion, just right into the existing grade, and they'll scoop out a foot or two, which is the depth you need to get your sub base. Six to six to twelve inches of stone. So they're going to basically plug out a trench along this. They're going to put in their stone, and it'll be level. That's your foundation for a modular wall. Crushed stone. Crushed stone. Yeah. And then they build the first course of wall blocks. What are the block sizes? Those would be probably about four feet on the higher end. They'd probably only be the two-footers on the low end. On the, on the 15 foot gravity walls, even 20 foot, we'll see six foot blocks. Yeah. Or we'll even see them double stacked. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a pyramid. The more depth you go, the more tail you need and the more weight you need on the wall. So once they get that first course of blocks in, they stack like Legos. Mm. I expect this would be done in a day or two. Yeah. They go really quick. So really, most of the time you care, you just get that base course of lock-in, and after that, you just stack them. And you saw in my written comments that I suggested pulling it out to the 35. Mm -hmm. And I see that you did move it, but um, can you just explain your decision not to do the 35? Uh, again, it's just, it, it's the usable yard on this. We wanted to make sure we had room to get around the house on this side. This really would have constrained it. We so couldn't even get a, a, like a mini exterior or back if you did need to do maintenance or something back here. And we have the, this house again is, is, we have it on the setbacks on this one, here and here. So you couldn't go around the other side of the house with the mini excavator? Again, you could, but you end up with this alley. And again, I, based on precedent, there's never been a waiver. We've been allowed to put walls up to the 25. So I think what I did here is I pulled it off to make sure we can preserve that 25 here because we will be excavating down right at that point. It's not just like feathering a yard out. It's we have to excavate down a foot or two to get that sub basin. I thought that two foot buffer was a good accommodation. Plenty of plenty of wood. I don't know. I just wonder about, you know. The bylaw calls out a shed. You know, building construction of any kind is prohibited, including but not limited to a porch and deck addition to shed. So if you have like a six by eight shed on like four footings, I would argue that this wall has a lot more impact than that shed would. Square footage wise, digging out wise, and needing it needs a building permit and just the sheer size and length of it. Because you'd have more square footage and you'd be doing much more disturbance than like a six by eight shed. It's my opinion, but um, that's kind of why I was asking to pull it out because it's it's not it's a very long wall. It's a large wall, so you know I understand that you're trying to give the people a usable yard. It's dropping off a lot on that side. It's just I'd like to see it further from the resource area personally. I don't know how does anybody else feel about it. I, I agree. Can this how can it put the whole house be shifted anymore it's, to the, it's right to the right? Is that what this line is here, right here? 
I mean, that's a that's not a buffer line. Can you step back? No, so that's what it says. Plus sixty-seven point five. Yeah, What's the setback. setback on the? It's the. Um, if you were to shift to the right, how? Where are you now with pinched, regards so to the it's setback? It's pinched on the deck and it's pinched here, so you got thirty feet off the front and fifteen feet off the side. You are fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's, so, you know, again, I, I, I appreciate, it, I understand it. Um, Excavating on deep foundation for a shed. I think this is a. It's not something where somebody's going to be stacking equipment or fertilizer bags, you know, throwing them behind a shed or done whatever they do around a shed. From, from an impact, this is a, a fixed feature. It's not, it's not like a usable shed where there's activity around it. And that's how I've always interpreted that bylaw, and we've always done it that way. Um, and if the commission's going to be making a change to the regulations or a different policy on that. Yeah, I think going forward, if we wanted to look at that to say, well, we wouldn't go with walls or, but. He's right. What we've been doing, you can't really change it up, right? You can't change it up in the middle like this if we've done it on Whipple Hill. And well, I wasn't around for Whipple Hill. Yeah. And yeah. the nature of a commission is it change. It's going to. Yeah. By by what a commission is, it changes over time. You have different yeah. members and they have different yeah. opinions. It's just yeah. kind of what happens. And maybe you, you won't know? vote for it. Is there any way to like? Make the house more narrow, but longer front to back. So you'd have a little more room on each side. Yeah, I, I'm in a tough spot because we've kind of we've gone on a lot of history here and precedent in designing this one out and fitting it. Uh, as you know, these aren't final engineered buildings. Okay. Maybe we have we have laid this out essentially as a full plan to put this on here and put the wall with, with a very you know what is a pretty narrow yard here. What I would what I would request for consideration is we will be coming back in with the final building for the plan. And maybe you know at that time once we're actually engineering it, maybe at that time we can look at is there anything we can do with this adjust because I think there would be an interest in reducing and maybe some wall costs if we can value engineer that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, when would you be coming back? Uh, we're we're probably looking at late summer. Uh, it would oh. be after the road, so maybe sooner. Uh, it's just probably when we can address it on the schedule. Yeah. So uh, I just feel kind of, I feel kind of, kind of, kind of we've been doing this for a long time. I provided you a written comment that said I wanted to see this for yeah. 35. The plan, the plan was engineered, though, it was done. You know, we already done all this work, and this is how it's always been interpreted. And I did pull it off. I did, you know, I, I respect the sensitivity, sensitivity of that 25-foot line mm -hmm. and making sure we don't get into that. In this case, we were excavating with the foot, foot putting in the wall. But What's the distance from the, the, the house to the wall now? As you this is about 12 feet. 12? And how much would you have to, you'd have to pull it in about you, you feet, right? You only have about three feet, and the wall would almost, you know, the, the toe of the block, there's not even enough, you know, there's not even enough room. You'd be hitting the foundation of the house at that point, you know, below ground. So it would be very narrow, trying to put that on the 35. By us doing this correctly from the beginning, I think it's only going to help the commission because you're going to have the homeowner coming to you later. If, if we squeeze this anymore. Yeah. Well, well I, but we don't I, have to agree with them. Yeah, you could pull it in one or two feet and just give a little more, and, and give a little more assurance that we, we know you'll never be impacting the 25. I think you have some latitude change in the shape of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you've got plenty of room out behind the house as it's currently drawn. It. Well, you say behind yeah. the house, but you can see the depth of the yard here. I was I was preserving the riverfront area. I, I, I view this as a more mm -hmm. more important resource. What we're talking about I'm here is a little strip, you know, and I know it is all contiguous down to it, but you have the rail trail and then the big wetland systems on the other side of the rail trail, right? I view the riverfront, and this comes down to the open space land next door, mm -hmm. and preserving and protecting that. So we did, you know. It's kind of a funky shape yard. There's not as much yard. I've got 35 feet here. 
I, I barely have any yard, you know, here. So that's where we focus our efforts. So pushing the house back, just, you know, you don't, you know. I, I think we have to get out there and, and look. Okay. This, uh, you know, this, we're really infringing on the wetlands here in the, the whole scheme of the whole project. And I think there's some room to make some accommodations here. And I think if we were to see it more, uh, we probably could make a better judgment. You want to, are you looking for a motion to continue the hearing? Well, I'm looking for a consensus first. Yeah. I'd be happy to go back, Do people want to though. get out there and see that? Because, you know, the day we were out there, we saw pretty much, excuse me? I was asking. Um, we saw pretty much what the roadway was. We didn't really get to see yeah. the lots. And uh, this one, you know, like I said, you know, we're well within the 25 on the road. And I, I understand that's a done deal. But I think, you know, as a commission, we have a little bit of latitude here, a little discretion to say, you know, we don't want that wall in there where it's at. We want to push it out a little bit. And I think you have some flexibility as far as the, the, the house design where you could do that. So you guys are conditioning this already to require us to come back at the building permit phase. So that condition's all there, already in there. Can we amend the uh, uh, condition for this one? Because we, we've been in here since September trying to get this done. Yeah, but it's a lot of, it's important. Here. It's a lot it of work. Is, but I think we, we, we're coming back in with the, with the building permit plan for this. And my, my proposal is, so we don't go through another month, go into 2020 and drag this out longer is come back with this and we will we will look at moving this wall in further based on that building permit design yeah but what's the harm because you've got the other two to work on anyway the harm is we want to be finished this oh, we've been nice. sitting on this for a long time so my hesitation on that is if we approve it now where it is then i i don't see that we can ask for it to be changed later if you put in the condition that you're asking for that to be moved in it leaves it Subject mm. to you moving that in, and you get to decide well, that. But we don't get to do it, though. I, I, I'm following you. If, if we approve it now, the, the way it is, if it's a condition on the permit, and if you want to put move it in three feet, another three feet, so it's at 30 feet, we're splitting the difference between the two. We meet half ways. Put that in the condition. We can't be any closer than 30 feet. Spell it out. We just you just approved the plan today where you were asking to do make plan changes on the condition. Which one's different. So it's not. Well, you say you'd move the wall another three feet? Three feet I think we can accommodate. We'll be down to about a seven foot clearance mm -hmm. here, but that's about the minimal width of a you know, backing a pickup truck down to, to Well if you move the wall another three feet, I'd probably support that. I'm only one person. Mr. Squire, would you support it tonight if we moved it three feet? I would, but I can't speak for the rest of the board. You need two out of three. You need, no, you need three, three out of four. Three out of four, I mean. Uh, two, two against two wouldn't work. You know how it works. Yes. But. <clears throat> I'm not used to having four members. <laughs> I know. We need, a, we need an odd number. <laughs> we, we want to accommodate the commission. And when I say Scott has like gone crazy on this project and you know a million different layouts. I, um, so Mr. Would Wilson, you entertain a motion if I if I con conditioned it on moving the wall three feet and then see how it flies? I'm still mm. thinking. Thirty feet right. right between. I mean that's that's half ways. I think that's fair. Yeah. Compromise. My, my feeling on this whole thing is this whole project is you don't in, like the project anyway, is infringing yeah. on the wetlands and our job here is to protect the wetlands so uh, if there is a way we can move that out in the 35 that's what I want now I'm sort of receptive to Scott's proposal when you come back but I don't want you to come back with it at 27 feet because well, then we're going to say no, and you're going to be right back to where you started. But if you if you say 30 feet in the condition, I don't have a choice unless you modify the condition. You hold on the contract, and we're willing to do that. 
it's tight, but you know, again, I think that that's okay. a good compromise as far as with the, a lot of precedent. So is that is the garage 24 feet across there? What, what's the? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a different scale. This this is a different scale than, than, than the other one. But yeah, again, it's a two car garage. It's a, it's a it's not a deep house. You can see how narrow that is. Mm -hmm. So the living's above the garage in the second level here. <coughs> Any Let's comment, Chelsea? You just want to go home. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no comment. I'm just. I'm really struggling with this one. Now, do you folks, you need a decision tonight because you need to go to. You're looking for. Financing yeah, or? We're looking to move. Yeah, we're looking to move. I mean, this has been dragging out for a long time. And, um, I, think, and I think we can. And do it's this been that's there's reasons for that dragging out for a long time. That's that's not our concern. Well, we've been compromising uh, across the board on everything. You know, and again, in the overall entirety of this thing, there's no precedent for the wall not being up to the 25 foot line, and we're yeah. proposing and offering to move it to 30, which is meeting half ways on this. Mr. Wilson, we, we respect the boards. You know, protecting the wetlands, and there's a lot of wetlands there. There's no, we understand that, and we want to keep the, the board happy. And we want to protect those wetlands, and we've tried to follow what the town of Davis has done over the years and all the projects that have worked that have been done, um, and over the last couple of years, and we keep getting pushed back on that. We keep compromising, and we're, we're trying to, you know, it was very helpful with what uh, uh, Commissioner Curran did on her comments, and we took that to heart, and it was very helpful. Scott spent a lot of on time that, we appreciate it. And uh, so we really would like to walk out of here with a decision. If that decision is, it's 30 feet, then we, we abide by that. Um, okay, I, 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 I hear you, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just having a, a thought here. Is there any flexibility with the lot lines? Can you? Shift the lot line on the the right hand side. I'm not sure what that is in that compass direction to make lot eight a little wider to the right hand side, which gives you some relief from the setbacks, and then you could move everything to the it, right. Again, it was it, it all precipitates out and, and it pushes riverfront impacts further down the line and pushes riverfront impacts into lot five, which we're not even going into the riverfront on lot five right now. And again, lot seven. I think it would just keep going it, it just down and down. In lot seven, we saw this is this is the narrowest lot in the whole. Process. Mr. Wilson, all your questions, that, you know, some of the things you're saying are excellent, and you're right on target. And we drove Scott crazy with similar questions on trying to shape the lots and, and move them. So. Okay, we know how Mike feels. Well, I'm saying I can no, make no, a I'm motion. Just, I'm just going to pull the board. I can first. make a motion if nobody seconds it. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't get voted. But you know, but my feeling is I, I want to build a consensus here. So you stay to what you're comfortable with, and now I'm going to put Chelsea on the spot and say, what would you be comfortable with? Honestly, I kind of was okay with it where it was. I was glad that they pulled it away from the 25 foot. If we can get them to pull it back a little further, I would be happy with that as well. Okay. And Vanessa? I'm struggling still. Sorry guys, I know. But I mean, I even going to 30, we're moving the needle, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We're starting to move away from allowing it at the 25. So that's an improvement over maybe some past approvals. I know that was the precedent, but you know, if this decision wasn't necessarily the most protective of the wetlands, eventually I would like to see things move more in that direction. And I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not even in a year yet. So a lot of these past projects, I, I don't know the first right. thing about. So all I know is what I have in front of me now. Um, I 
I'm just really struggling with this one. Because I don't want to like derail the whole thing, but I really would like to see it at 35. It's just personally what I would be more comfortable with and feel like it was a better protection. Because with the fence on top of it, you're just, you know, you're moving everything further out. The grass, everything will be just that little bit further away. Yes, yes. Um. And what's the, what's the plan for, so this two foot separation between the limit of work and the, and the wall, what's mm -hmm. your plan for that two feet once, the, once all the construction is done? It would be backfilled with loam and you're never gonna know the difference in a year. Okay, so you're just gonna let it revegetate naturally? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and, and I'll say too, you know, and I respect different members coming to believe me, I have been told more times than I can remember, you know, I wasn't on that board 15 years ago or 10 years ago or whatever. I, I get it, boards change, and that's, that's what's great about, you know, how we do things, and it works. Um, what I have seen, even though it's not a regulation change, but I have seen policies issued by commissions, and it's a document, it's, it's like the EP issues policies, and if that policy is, here's how we interpret the new build, moving forward, if I have something that says 35, I can say, you know, it's 35, guys. That's, that's, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, again, right now, we have been 25 for as long, uh, you know, I don't want to get the time, but you, know, you, you were involved with decisions just a year or two ago on Whipple Hill and Holly Hill and approving these walls up to 25. And I think 30 is a good compromise. We're, we are moving the needle. We're, we're meeting the middle on it. And the next one I come in with, and there will be more, um, I've got that 35 foot burn in my head right now. I think wall. if we accomplish that, we've accomplished something. Are there any comments from the, the audience? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matthew Duggan, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. Uh, this wall on uh, for Lot 8, what was the length of the wall again, the retaining wall that's 6 or 7 feet high? 115 feet long. And it's not 6 feet high the whole way. It, it tapers. Yeah, it down. tapers, okay. So that wall combined with, uh, I think, does it connect to the wall that's uh, re for the roadway? Is there a, uh, do they connect? It doesn't look like no, it, but no. they're close. Right. So we already know about the wall from the roadway. That's 10 feet by 300 feet. So these retaining walls, they change the, the topography of the land. And mm -hmm. the end result will be a degradation of the wetlands as we, as they are today because um, the addition of the road and the driveways thousands and thousands of feet of uh, asphalt non pervious surface that water today would recharge the existing wetlands by uh, the slope of the topography of the land if the, the rain and the snow hits the uplands and flows down into uh, the vegetated wetlands and keeps them um, keeps them wet you're pretty much year-round that water on from the roadway will be redirected to the retaining area down at the beginning of the road so that water's gone these wetlands they're in danger of being uh, of just drying out and not being able to you know to, to be sustainable so that, that would be a concern of, of mine. Um, I, I hear references to Whipple Hill. I, and a butter up there provided video to me that showed water flowing from that project onto his land. And it, and it looked like a river. Uh, I, I, I know the storm was that he videotaped was kind of a, an anomaly, but still. These, these uh, retaining walls, they change the flow of the water. And so that well, should be part of the consideration. I well, think. that's maybe a, a consideration to talk about in the sense that a wall stops water where a fence allows it to pass through. Yeah. Well, what Not about, necessarily for this project. Yeah, but there's I, no I see, culverts or is there any No, I'm openings? saying with a fence, water can pass through a fence. Right. It can't pass through a wall. Yeah. 
Well, there's no uh, re no culverts or any kind of openings mm -hmm. along this these walls, right, where moisture can just naturally flow through. There is a bottom drain. Yeah. They have uh, bottom drains. drains and stormwater management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, that that would be my this this lot eight is really kind of it, it's it's almost as if it's kind of not an afterthought, but it's definitely one that stands out from all the others. Thank you. So if we were going to move the wall from 27 to 30, could you also move in the limit of work from 25 yeah, to 28 or whatever? Could I respond to that too? Because the you know, things mm -hmm. I don't have to agree with uh, scientifically. Um, we are changing some of the grades in this house. We are building a wall, but the way we do stormwater management and the way I design it is, and it's by code. But we are not, you know, we're required to not increase the rate of runoff in the in the in the post development condition of the land. So we're taking into account trees, slope, all these factors, how much pavement, sidewalks, lawn versus forest, and we're I've gone through this this lecture with the commission and prior applications many times. We are providing as much or more ability to recharge groundwater with the post condition as we are in the existing condition. We are matching as close to the same, knowing that we do have to show we reduce runoff, but we try to get as close to the existing condition as possible because we don't want to use water in the wetland. Mm -hmm. And if anything, by softening the slope, we're promoting areas that are steep now and water will just fire right off to permeate into the ground and let the soil and part of the do their thing and treat that water as it makes its way back out. Well, I think the board understands that. Yeah, I just I wanted to respond to that because it um, we, we do put a lot of emphasis in storm water runoff and treatment. Um, so yeah, uh, to your point, yes, we would move the board of the work back out with the wall because we, we would have no need to clear more than we need to. Any other comments? Can I see you comfortable? <laughs> well, with that, yes, but I just noticed something else. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. The So this two to one slope, mm -hmm. which I think was previously, the one to one slope mm -hmm. was outside the buffer. Now yep. it's all fully within the 25. The new 25 that you marked. The new to the future. Yeah. But it was to keep the wall out of that, that, that future 25. It doesn't exist now, so I didn't consider there a waiver on that. Okay, so. Would you do the disturbance before you replicate the wetland or after? My, my recommendation to this replication first. So this is the first thing that happens and then we back ourselves out and the, and the limit of work gets moved up to protect the new wetland. Once that's stabilized, we pull up the silt fence for the edge of that. Mm. That way we're not leaving it disturbed. We're not leaving it disturbed and it gets the growing, you know, the growing of the new wetland as early as possible. And I think the idea of softening the slope because we're already in this area doing the replication work on mm -hmm. the roadway. This is already approved to be disturbed as part of the roadway permit. We're, we're softening that slope so it, you know it's more maintainable. Mm -hmm. I think that was, that was interpreted that comment. I apologize. have anything else okay uh, I would propose that the wetlands propose that we, we we order we issue a tentative or proposed order conditions tonight but based on the 30 foot setback for the uh, for the wall 
but you have to come back to us after your wetlands replication is completed and show us just where those lines are and then we'll approve it based on that. So that the, uh, one of the conditions of the order will say we have to file a plan, updated plan that shows the replicated wetland at that time, the right, building, then, the building, the wall moves out to 30 feet. The limit and then your line's based on that, right. I think we can agree to that. So the, the approval now would approve this plan with the condition that the wall is moved to the 30 and they come back prior to getting the building permit. Prior to getting the building permit and showing what the replicated line is. And they, 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 they have to show the replicated line. Right. Area, right. And, and also moving the twenty, the limit of work to twenty-eight feet. From the that was a piece of that. Yeah. Okay. Can you put that into a motion, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll make a, yeah, I could say that. I'll make a motion uh, that we issue an order of conditions for lot number eight, uh, uh, with the condition that the the uh, wall be moved to a thirty foot, not less than thirty foot, and that the applicant be required to come back once when they do their replication and revisit the the thirty foot wall. Also, that the, in the, in the, the lines. and the, the limit lines. of work be uh, not less than 28 feet, and also that uh, there be a. Uh, do we need a deed restriction here? Uh, it will be. Will this one be applied with no. the? No. This doesn't have to be restricted. Okay. And uh, Mark is on the 25. Markers on the fence. I'm on the uh, probably on the fence on the retaining wall. On the fence. Yeah. And then the at fence. the at the riverfront as well. Mm -hmm. And at the riverfront. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's the motion. Okay, the motion's been made. Is it second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Questions? As I'm going <laughs> to be Sorry, guys. I know it's, it's all right. Right. But I'm like, I can't just be like, OK, because no, it's no, late, no, and no. I can do my update. You can't. OK. Uh, Caring's so. hard, you know? <laughs> There's, I think, can we discuss the, uh, yes. the, the, the variations <laughs> at the, the violations? So does Chelsea. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll, we'll skip the old update. and new. So now I'm just going to ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. The public wants the updates. Oh. Oh. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.